<laughs> Howdy, folks. Welcome to Adventures in Oberon, Courts of Everest. I am your DM this evening and most, uh, Joe Treff. <laughs> I forgot my name for a second. There. <laughs> joining me uh, are my friends Matt, Tina, Kara will be joining us in just a little bit. Um, well, probably just a medium bit, <laughs> Hannah, and Alana. And uh, we're going to be playing some D&D in just a second, but before we do, a couple of quick announcements. <laughs> we just Kara. edit Kara. No, no, this is like the... <laughs> I thought you were just like, and I was like, oh yeah, just totally casual, yeah. Well, I, I should have remembered, I wanted to put the big stuff normal here, oh, but I forgot. Yeah, Kelpie. Kelpie is a good stand-in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we will play D&D at some point, but before we do, a couple of quick announcements. First of all, uh, Mosaic Team 5, our Starfinder campaign we played last night. It was a great night full of a lot of roleplay. Uh, you can see that re-air on YouTube at Elberon RPG at noon on Sunday. And then that's going to be followed by a re-airing of this session at 4 p.m. If I remember it all. Uh, we also have an Instagram at Alberon RPG. You can see all kinds of things. We have stuff on the table right now. It's just a piece of paper. And uh, oh, it's a little dinosaur. And a little cat guy there. So yeah, so all kinds of toys. You can't really see them when we're you know just kind of doing it on that camera. It gives you an idea, but you can see it much closer on Instagram at Alberon RPG. And then finally, uh, for sound effects like this happy 64-bit music. Look at that. Uh, Sirenscape, which is a digital tool set that you can use to add music to your games, uh, to your life, to your bathroom experience, I guess if you really want. Oh, you could really confuse people in a, like a public bathroom setting. Oh, um, geez, public because, bathrooms are unpleasant enough. Well, they already have things like, you know, you can just cast a quick lightning bolt in the bathroom, and people are just going to be like, what did you eat? Excuse me, could you Sirenscape some squares? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard her refer to as squares. <laughs> Excuse me, good sir. Can you spare some squares? Oh, uh, and with that, I'm going to get us into our recap. We're in a, a great space tonight. Um, also, hello, Gunnar. I had a great week. Thank you. I hope you had a good week as well. I came in the mail. I was so excited. It was just a random sticker. I came for free. Wandering hearts. Last we played... <laughs> All of you made your way to a place different than where you had last been. No longer were you in the Blackberry Briary, this place in the Feywild that uh, contained bees, honey, and all kinds of wonderful mead. Instead, you found yourselves in a place with acidic soil and pebbly sort of uh, earth and heavy mist that, unlike the Feywild, really held the taste and feeling of almost ash. Billy was familiar with this place, known as the Feylite Moorlands, a place that she had been in when, uh, sort of in her youth. You managed to sneak across a makeshift bridge of mud, although some of you more successful than others at that endeavor. Was it me? <laughs> was, it, was it me? <laughs> I honestly forget if I was the one who fucked you up. You eventually, nobody, nobody fucked up We didn't super fall bad. off. Didn't I fall. almost fucked up really bad. But Cheshire, Cheshire saved Cheshire my ass. That. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was that, that high yeah. roll allowed for two successes. Yeah. 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 Yep, yep, yep. There, yeah, there was that whole thing. Who's coming next? <laughs> yeah. Do they get help? Do they not get help? Yeah. Had you the answer been eventually, far to the north, reached this ruin of a tower. Uh, you had seen it from a distance, and here it looked like a pretty defensible place. Ruins of a wall, uh, elements of a um, perimeter actually still intact. And so you set about making camp, intent to rest, because many of you running low on spells. Minka, you went out and looked for some firewood, and you were the first to notice that there was a strangeness to this place. Lights drifted in the fog, and you heard voices coming from them, but they seemed to vanish almost at once. You all ignored this and decided, you know what, still a great place to rest, but this time we're gonna post a watch. And so you did, very wisely, post a watch. Uh, and over the course of the night, these creatures, Will the Wisps, came in and out of the space before Ori, during your watch, you saw them from above getting closer and closer, closing in a ring around your camp. 
you fought these creatures, including a very large will-o'-the-wisp-like creature that had more of a uh, acidic and gas-like nature to it. <clears throat> You fought an unseen creature as well, or are you really bearing the brunt of that individual's attacks? Although it also seemed to have some affinity or ability to heal the wisps. This creature seemed to escape, but you did manage to vanquish or in one case, frighten all of the wisps away. Ori, up at the top floor of this tower, you found a mirror and through the mirror, there was no reflection, but instead, the area closer to a place that you have been previously. Another element of the basalt ribs that are a little bit more to the east and to the south, just north of the Valley of Fireflies, a place where you all started your adventure. However, you decided not to go through. Or it's a little unclear if you I'm have decided to mirror. Time. We, we need a nap, okay? <laughs> That's, that was the only note that I put down, looking through mirror. Good. And that is where I leave off. <laughs> okay, so in, in a slightly different reality is Ori. Which, I mean, I guess that's pretty par for the course. Yeah. All right. So for all of you now, you are in the ruins of this tower. Uh, Alina and Ori, the two of you actually in the tower proper, up on the top or second to top floor. Cheshire, you are in the bottom floor, kind of amongst the elements of ruin, still kind of hiding there. And then Minka, there you go, you just immediately <laughs> haven't really left your bedroll, still standing on it, you just kind of go back. Um, Minka, you and Billy are both out in the sort of field area. Mm -hmm. um, what would you all like to do? All right, Alina's going to say to Ori because she sees him looking at the mirror. <laughs> I'm looking through the mirror. She's going to grab think. his arm and be like, we need to rest. Oh, we can... yeah, it was the basalt rib cage that yeah, was yeah. through it. Yeah, um, She's going to grab his arm and be like, we need to rest. Billy needs to rest. Come back to the camp and we uh, can well, check this out in the morning. Why don't you rest and I'll keep watch of the portal that just opened after we were attacked by the thing that presumably went through. Actually, that sounds great. Yes. Good night. <laughs> I don't think it is. <laughs> also, I don't want to have to climb back down. That's right. Al Alina's gonna also make sure before she goes to do her rest, she's gonna like make sure that Billy does too. Okay. Are you gonna rest on the third floor? No, I'm gonna go down to like the ground okay. level. Okay. No problem. So everybody but Ori down at the ground level, mm -hmm. and all of you but Ori going to sleep. Um, no, I we'll set a watch. Rest. We'll set a down here watch. I mean, or, okay, I'm, keep, I'm keeping uh, watch from above. I'm, yeah? kind of like, I'm not just gonna stare at the mirror. All I don't know that. I'm gonna look. <laughs> I keep a good watch. Okay. I mean, if you promise to keep a good watch, then. Well, just, well I'm, I'm up in the tower. Where else am I gonna? I'm gonna look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use my eye for detail. Uh, so, all of you make your way down. Miles away. Is there anything that you want to do before you begin this long rest? Or, I guess, <laughs> re begin this long rest? I'm gonna be summoning Petal during the rest. Okay. I think Mingo would try to see if there's any room on the inside of the ruins. Okay. Yeah, there is. <laughs> Instead of just sleeping out on the floor. <laughs> In the first floor of the tower, much of like the mud and the stones that have fallen down have collapsed in. There are three corners that are relatively ruin free. One of them uh, has Cheshire right now, mm -hmm. but there are two that are, are available. Okay. Okay. I think Billy and I should snooze in here as well because I know Billy kind of got most of the, the brunt of a lot of it. What? And Oh, is he still up there? You're doing great. <laughs> yeah, all right. Get some rest. Um, so, yeah, that sounds good. I mean, yeah. Alina's going to rest wherever Billy is. So okay. if that's where Billy is, then that's where Alina's going to be, too. No worries. Okay. Then we can take turns. Uh, or is... Yeah, we should take turns. <laughs> <laughs> just up above <laughs> So you set two watches, Ori, unbeknownst to you. Uh, you're like, yeah, I got this. Like, they trust me. I am going to, to keep the party safe. <laughs> Who is taking the first uh, downstairs watch? I'll take the first one. Okay. <laughs> you begin your long rest. Um, while that's happening, I, w I think I would do a little more, um, like, searching of this tower, 
because I've pieced together the two different halves of the symbol on the two floors, <coughs> and now there's the mirror up here. As you go to look for these two symbols, gone. Oh, okay. mm. Um, I guess I would keeping watch priority. Okay. But in the downtime between, like looking around. In the downtime, still down nothing. Yeah. Um, I would want to just do like a. A full sweep of the top couple of floors where they're not resting to okay. see if there's any clue as to what had been residing here. Make an investigation check at advantage. And then, um, yeah, let's start with that. All right. Um, 13. Was that advantage? Yeah, yeah, it was bad. It was bad rolls. You take we're a look. This has actually really been like a two week now. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel like I've just goes absorbed all of Dan's bad luck the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Oof. Um, he's Don't just summon him. He's growing, <laughs> he's growing more powerful. <laughs> but you His corruption is spreading. You take time to look through the ruins, and they have okay. they've collapsed in pretty substantially, and so it's hard to really pick out too much. Mm. There are definitely traces of magic here. You can feel it, and you get kind of this smell, almost like um, when somebody heats metal up. It's not the smell of hot iron or blood. It really is just the smell of, like, like heat mm -hmm. um, you can almost smell. But you can't find any source. Mm -hmm. You don't find those marks that you saw before. Nothing, really. Huh. Go ahead and make a perception check. Flat? Yep. All right, that's better. Uh, 23. Okay. The first hour goes by. You search through the ruins and taking care to, like, look through the windows and every now and then glancing around, glancing through the mirror. Nothing approaches the camp from around. There's no animals. There's no more of these little lights that seem to dance through. And after another couple hours go by, um, you don't notice anything that is especially dangerous. You feel for a brief moment towards the end of your watch, like there is some kind of movement oh. from beyond that mirror. Oh. <laughs> Quick pivot. <laughs> and looking beyond, you see just stone. The basalt mm -hmm. that stretches up like a rib cage around this clearing that the other side of the mirror seems to pass into. Mm -hmm. But maybe an animal, something small, the mirror is still open as a portal, though. Yes. And hasn't seemed to, like, shift or, um, like, no sign that it might close anytime soon or anything. Make an arcana check. It doesn't really look any different, Special. but in terms of trying to figure out if it's going to close Yeah, like, is it, is it being held open by some sort of magic, or is it, like, this is just, it's in its on state kind of thing? Ooh, that's actually pretty good for me. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Um, you've received a good amount of education about magical things, and so... <sighs> This is something, while well, you may not have heard of this item, it's an item. It's linked together. Uh, and so it's one mirror that feeds into another. There's probably not like a spell actively keeping this on, and so it's not something that is immediately at threat of collapsing, but you could dispel it. I mean, or there's like ways. Break the mirror. Or yeah, something. absolutely. Yeah, there are ways of, of getting rid of it if you needed to. Okay, cool. That's, that's it. Your watch goes by, and you're going to do like a full eight hour watch. Well, yeah, because I got my long yeah. rest before, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I guess I would just... We were okay. halfway through a long rest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but you got to restart, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we Morlocks at least got a short rest out of it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Do I get a short rest during my watch? <laughs> um, <sighs> of just, like, sitting there? You're not... I would say yes if you were just, like, sitting there. Okay. But you are going through the tower. Yeah. You are looking through the mirror. You are Towards writing a small bibliography. It starts to get light out. <laughs> yeah. Can I take, like, a quick 20 minutes to roll a hit die? <laughs> no. Quick That's not how that works. I appreciate that, though. Um, <laughs> so you you really start thinking about, maybe I should take a rest right towards the end of this long rest for everybody else. <laughs> and for all of you, you can mark off a long rest. Yay! Yay. 
and all the healing and the spells come back that are associated with that. Thank goodness. Mm. Everyone feeling a bit better now? Oh. Sorry. Everyone feeling a bit better? Good morning! Oh, I'm still quiet. up here. <laughs> it's time to wake up. It's getting late in the day. It's, the sun's morning. out. You it's actually still quite lovely up here. It's a very nice view. All right, well, it's hard to it wish you good morning anything. when you don't stop talking. Good morning. Oh, good morning. I'm glad, glad to see you're all doing better. Thanks. All right, uh, I guess I'll... Why don't well, you come down here so we well, can... Why don't you come up? It's, it's much more difficult for me to come back down, and I have a feeling that we're going to end up going through this mirror here. Is there so, enough? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm going to wait here until you're ready. <laughs> Is there enough space on that top floor for all of us? Um, no. Uh, I think there's probably enough space for, like, two of you at a time and the mirror. Hmm. Okay, so Alina to the rest of it, to like the girls, I guess, is gonna be like, so there's a portal up there. Um, or he really wants to go through. Uh, well, you know, uh, actually, we should probably go through in shifts because there's only really enough room for a couple of us at a time up here. Why don't you go first, Ori? Would it put us closer no. to the next fire or further away? Uh, did Alina see like. Where it, it, sorry, did Alina see clock that it's like the Valley of Fireflies? Lori mentioned that that was very close to the Valley of Fireflies because we should go see Apple. Okay, mm -hmm. so I communicate that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it does get us closer. That's good because we still don't really know how much time has passed since we left. <laughs> yeah, we need to and find a newspaper or something. We <laughs> may or may not be within the time frame we're, we're supposed to be, right? You there? What day is it? <laughs> uh, yeah, because we were in the Feywild for what, like, like a few hours? Uh, something like probably like eight-ish hours. Who knows? Who knows how much time is passed? There's a lot of drinking. So uh, I think it makes sense to go through. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of swamp everywhere here. So we're not gonna make very good time around here anyway. And what's the worst that? Oh, oh don't say that. Oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, well, up we go then. Uh, everybody who wants to, go ahead and make an athletic check at advantage. You can take a little bit of time to do this. Um, we could bring it down. <laughs> you could just bring the mirror down. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> sure, sure. Essentially oh, that's double twos to start us off. Oh. So it's really climbing. There's nothing really to swing on or <laughs> hang exactly. from. If, if there's some other way, I did have my rock. rope that I Why fired from the third <laughs> floor to the fourth floor. Yeah. Um, it's still, not really, it's still no. climbing. It's still hold, like no. carrying your body yeah. right up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm still gonna guidance. Do fantastic. Everyone no. here. Everyone um, gets a guidance because I can do that. Oh, thank you, Billy. Yeah. That just means you have to go last, right? So, or yeah. Cheshire gets a four. <laughs> That's okay. Mm. Uh, Billy gets a thirteen. Oh, and Alina gets a one, a dirty one. Nice, okay. a dirty one. Oh wait, oh no, you said uh, a guidance? guidance. Okay, two. Oh, <laughs> I go last. Much better. So, so here's the thing, Ori, you and Cheshire get up. And I'm wait. just standing in front of the mirror, trying to like keep Cheshire away from it. Yeah. And a minute goes by, and then two, and then three, and you can hear a commotion below, and it's just Billy and Minka and Alina who are all just trying to get up. It's a little bit foggy. The ash becomes almost like a little bit of a, um, it's a little bit slippery and gritty, and so it makes it harder to hold on to things. And it's just you're 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 having trouble get up. Get. I am <laughs> having trouble get up. We got a wheel. <laughs> <sighs> Every... is hip checking Ori through the mirror. Okay, no problem. No. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, for the rest of you, with that wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you could make your way up and into the uh, the floor with this mirror. Saving throw. Oh, depressing that we had to spend the wheel on getting up. It's <laughs> really oh. upsetting. What was that, Ori? <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> and as Billy is about to pop up, that would be the last spot on the floor, and it would be full. And luckily, Alina, right as you get up, 
you're like, oh wait, there's not gonna be enough space, and you can see Ori like start to look around, and he's about and to realize that, the and then mirror. Chester just hip checks him. <laughs> <laughs> and through the mirror, Ori <laughs> onto the ground, through the mirror. Uh, Stand back, please. The rest of you. <laughs> What is your damage? But then I climb through. <laughs> you make it through. There's not like a limit on how many people can go through this, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just it's like walk through. Is. It's like the. Didn't we or say on the through. other side? It's like a. Kind of goes through. Natural it's space. like mm-hmm. a Alina basalt rib cage. Mm-hmm. And Billy goes through. And Mickey, you're the last one. Uh, I was the last one off the tower because I was giving everyone guidance. Yeah. So I would probably be either last or second or last to go through, depending on what Cheshire wants to go through. Minka, when you go through, you are the last one. And all of you make it to the other side. Hey. Without any problems. Uh, you do emerge into a place that is a little bit more <laughs> a little bit more <laughs> acrid smelling uh, than the Valley of Fireflies proper. It's a little warmer. Um, getting closer to about 85 degrees. Give me one second here. All right. <clears throat> what the heck? <laughs> you were right over there? Dude. That neck just gave the loudest pop. Oh, yeah, that's always very satisfying. Yeah. So 85 degree air, it is a little bit less humid here than the foggy, misty uh, uh, Felite Moorlands. But um, as you do emerge here, Ori, through the sort of slightly more morning than evening dusk than uh or sorry dawn than dusk you're able to see the last couple glints in the horizon a little bit to the south a few fireflies Mm. and as you look through this cage of basalt there are the same kind of trees that you had seen previously um give me one second here so can i make my way towards the apple's house I mean, you can. The problem is, after about five or six feet, cool, there's stone. Oh, Again, yeah. this stone cage. Yeah. And so that is the limit to what you can do without further intervention. Oh, so there's like a physical cage, essentially. It oh. really does, when you now look at it, look almost like a bird cage, like uh-huh. uh, coming down. And you can see all around there are jagged bits like of basalt. Closed. And it looks like somewhere maybe there was a volcano that erupted. And these are just shards that have rained down over time. Or not over time. Uh-huh. When that happened. Um, there is moss that grows up it, and so this event probably happened a long time ago. Um, is there a clear path out of it? Or? Once you get through this initial almost cage-like structure around you, absolutely. It's very easy to walk through. It obstructs sight lines, but it doesn't really block your path. Okay. So Hesitating it's... for like 30 seconds to see what other people do, and if they Starting don't to look move, for a way to move, yeah. maneuver my way through. Make an investigation check. Okay, so you begin to tap your feet, Cheshire. <laughs> Ori is a little distracted. So you said this is like a little volcanic area? Yes. Okay, and it's like the, it's basalt. Okay. That was a oh. natural one for three. Very nice. So Ori, you are certainly on ground. For you, looking around and thinking about, is this like a volcanic area? Yeah. To the north, you can see there are mountains and beyond the mountains uh, and like actually right in front of the mountains like uh, still pretty far in the distance there is the charred remains of what was at one time a forest Mm -hmm. and then mountains and then there's like a little bit of smoke rising up from beyond and so Mm -hmm. if there is volcanic activity it's to the north Um, but this area seems to be maybe like uh, within a eruption zone where when a volcano erupts and it jettisons material out this is an area where at, at some point it has landed. Mm-hmm. Wait, wasn't there like an army by the volcanic area? Yeah. Up in the, the north. Uh, up in the north. Ignis, yeah, someone. The, the, yeah. the goblins and the ground, is that what it was? Yeah. Or he is really precisely investigating about four square inches of the ground. Um, uh, I, I vaguely remember we had this originally uh, before see. we first started working in here some right ignis fireborn gap yeah. fire genasi leading an army north of the valley yeah but right. some didn't seem to care about the army but <laughs> we like reported it to him and he was like, yeah, he was like oh. yeah. is the army still here and if we travel <laughs> from the north down are we gonna run it's into them here. going to in this valley. four foot square <laughs> um Okay, so Petal's here, and Petal, I had sent Petal to go scout it out. Sure. So. Make a um, perception check for Petal. <clears throat> yeah. Not us. Petal. 
that's going to be an 11. An 11? Okay. Yeah. So, Petal kind of flies out, and before you even go through, like, the the uh, mirror, she would let you know this is like a 30 by 30 foot space within this cage. Not like an exact square, but roughly uh, kind of like an oblong space. Uh, it looks almost like um, petrified lightning from above, she would tell you. So like looking at it, it's just jagged kind of basalt that comes down. And then uh, da -da -da, going around, she would tell you to the south, there is like a crevasse that dives down and she would tell you there's honey locust trees mm -hmm. and that to you speaks of the Valley of the Fireflies. Um, and with a, a lemon, that's really all you see. Well, one thing, so what I meant, this is good to know, but what I meant to ask Petal, so a while ago when I sent her to go scout out Ignis Fireborn's army or oh, whatever. Right, 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 yes. So what I want to know is if, is if based on that previous scouting, if she recognizes where we are in relation to the army. I would say if she goes a little bit further north, she would find a road. And this road, based on the overgrown cobblestones and the elements of grass that grow through it, um, is the same kind of reclaimed road that winds its way through the Valley of Fireflies and that you all follow to eventually come to this kind of bewildered bugbear's house because, like, why are these people here live in the middle of nowhere? Um, but, uh, so, like, sort of, you're, you're nearby. It's still probably, like, a, it would be out of the way to go. You're closer to the Valley of Fireflies than to where you were before. So we're not in danger. So like Minka's worry was that we're gonna like stumble across this army accidentally, right? <laughs> well, you were further south. You were in the Valley of Fireflies when you ran into these goblins chopping wood. Mm -hmm. So are you south enough to be safe of this army? Hard to tell. Mm -hmm. um, you're not any closer than you were before. Well, Alina doesn't really want to be in a cage with you people, so she's going to squeeze through the, uh... <laughs> sure, make an athletics check. Yeah. <laughs> I do not recognize that you've gone through because I'm too focused on this small... That's another problem. dirty one. <laughs> so We're rolling you twos squeeze tonight, your shoulder through, you get about halfway through, and as you do, you just become stuck. Half in, half out. Uh, you're, you try to like pronk out and you can't really get any lift. And then as you do it again, you get just high enough so that your feet no longer touch the ground and you are immobilized oh. above the ground. Oh no. Only Italy. like by a couple of <laughs> um, okay. Mink is gonna start trying to move oh. Earth. So uh, she's first gonna try and move Mold Earth so uh, Alina has foothold again, so she's not dangling. Okay. And then she's gonna try to like, find the largest amount of space and try to like see if she can like dig enough space so we can like squeeze out <laughs> yeah the easy path. okay yeah. <laughs> which is the whatever path out oh okay from uh, her stuck position alina's like i want to make it known that i considered casting thunder step but i'm not going to <laughs> <laughs> you mold earth up and alina your hooves suddenly find the ground no longer just dangling there in kind of an embarrassing way. And so, like, you started to hear Billy snicker, and then that quickly... <laughs> that was a great noise. That quickly transitions into a kind of just like a sigh. And then, uh, Minka, you just pull little elements of the earth, not the full foot, just enough so that Alina falls back onto the ground. Thank you. <laughs> you push it a little further out, like a little at a time so that you don't collapse this whole thing in on yourself. And without any issue, you can make your way out. No problem. Centipede. How hmm? centipede? Just, <laughs> just go over there. <laughs> I, just, I just got super distracted. Is by it that. shiny? <laughs> I was, it was moving, and I was looking at Joe, and I was like, "What is that?" So no problem. <laughs> All of these things happen. You are able to get your way through these. Uh, Even me. Almost kind of things of basalt. You take a little while, you're still looking at this little patch of grass. You can almost swear, if you look at the blades of grass in just the right way, you might be able to find a footprint and that might help you out. When you turn around to tell people this and nobody's here, you could hear people chatting and then you realize people have created a path and have left. You coming, Ori? Oh, that's what it was. There's a big silverfish. Yeah, that makes sense. You're in basement. Y'all. <laughs> that's fine. That was the shiny thing. Yeah. Was it? Oh. It. So Plus, Ori sees yeah. a silverfish Plus, on the ground. It's a really cool bottle. Oh. <laughs> I have a squeeze through. <laughs> you make it go through. Mm -hmm. 
But so, so you would know, and based on Petal's sort of reconnaissance, you need to travel a little bit east and then south, and you'll make your way into this valley from the opposite side of where you had entered mm-hmm. in no more than maybe like 30 minutes. And that's at just, you know, a walking pace. Okay. Is there a way to take a quick detour to get to Yuppel's place? So Yuppel lives in the Valley of Fireflies. You're, you're headed there. No, so we're going to pass by regardless. You, even if you take the most direct route, you will be walking literally by his house within 30, 40 feet. It's on the way to the Emerald Spire, yes, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. That's how we All found right. Yuppel in the first place. Yes. Yeah. Looking for, uh, on the way, yeah. some, you know, a nice little spread to bring as a... I get hopefully a housewarming. <laughs> you need your nature check as you're going. No problem. So how many grungs do we expect to find there with Yuffle? Hopefully at, at, at least, least two more, three, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm getting enough for three, hopefully. Probably not, because that's an eight. You do find a little bush as you're going about, and not really a bush, more of like a little, um, through some bushes, there's a little clearing, and there's mustard greens. They're a little wilted, and it looks like maybe a branch broke away, and so this area struck by sun, mm-hmm. and it's not really growing great, but, I mean, you know, they're edible. Well, all right, I'll just take those and just continue along, and if I see anything that I can take as a little cutting so we can plant it. Okay, sure. <laughs> Um, if other people are paying attention to where we're going, and Minka's gonna try to make a little like a crown for Yuffle, like okay. like just essentially druidcraft yeah. and pick up random sticks and stuff to kind of like make a little hat, like make a, little, a performance check, a yeah. Crown or I would say an make apology a crown. Check. Make a really check. Hope, apology crown. <laughs> really hope we don't show up and be dead. That's gonna oh, suck. <laughs> The weather is fairly nice, the air is warm, and it does smell as you get a little further away from the basalt elements and into areas where the grass grows richer. The honey locust trees begin to grow a little bit higher here. Um, It smells a little bit more like actual spring. Uh, There is a little bit of a faint char when the wind blows from the north, but aside from that, very, very pleasant. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. 17. 17. With the 17, no problem. Here and there, you can see there's little bits of black birch and... Um, the honey locust trees, you can use elements of wood to make both like a dark and light element that twists together to form a little crown. Mm-hmm. And you can make little flowers and things grow off that. The honey locusts yeah. actually make little uh, white flowers that are quite nice. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> so you make your way south. Is there anything that you're doing as you're going? So it's Yuppel and then Patty should be there too. Maybe Dweepy. Who knows? Hopefully. I didn't. Dweepy was going into the city, so he probably never stopped by. Was Dweepy your drug dealer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was going in. Alina is spending. Like how we've, we've had, we have 17 sessions and you have an established drug dealer yeah. <laughs> that I don't really remember. <laughs> Alina is, spend, is like dividing her attention between making sure Minka doesn't run off mm-hmm. and um, just paying attention to Billy, who presumably is like, <laughs> Still very paranoid. Billy definitely on the lookout. And especially over the course of the night, I would say um, you heard like normal night sounds. And when those things happen, there's a crack of twigs or, you know, or he sneezes up on the fourth floor. Uh, Billy would like shift and kind of start a little bit, even in her sleep. But still here. You make your crown for Yuppel, and you make your way through uh, this area to the Valley of Fireflies. Mm-hmm. However, <clears throat> on your way there, uh, who is leading this party? It should not be me. It's definitely I'm not, not you. Attention. You're under supervision. I think it's probably Ori. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I'm probably the most excited to go see Yuppel. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, Why does my characters always wind up being the babysitter? <laughs> <laughs> At least for different reasons. This <laughs> Perception. Oh, buddy. Uh, 12. Okay. You walk. Does anybody have a passive perception of above uh, 18? No. 19. I was close. I have a 7. So even though I'm totally focused on finding some fucking twigs or something for (laughs) Yuppel. Passively. <laughs> 19. 
However, it doesn't seem like the sort of thing that you might have actively seen reveals itself to you. And so you walk by and have a pleasant walk for the next couple hours. And you almost swear at a certain point you hear like the pluckings of a guitar string, but then you hear like a bird and another animal run off in the distance and probably just nature. Must have been the wind. Must have been the wind. <laughs> what was that noise? <laughs> After walking for about half an hour, your I feet you out there. <laughs> your feet find a path that is a little bit more firm, and the dirt gives way to here and there little paved stones, uh, although much has been grown over, and there are green blades of grass that grow between these sort of uh, pavers on the side. On either side of you, the path does begin to descend, and you can see now rising up into the crevasse. There's no fire, fireflies, presumably. It's like probably about 11 in the morning mm. um, on the 14th of Summertide for anybody who's paying attention to keep track. Uh, not a terrible amount of time has passed since you left, probably about the amount that you would expect. You... Anything you want to do before making your way into this valley? Uh, Going in, I'm going beelining for Yuffle, baby. I'm practicing my pronking. Yuffle and Patty, too. And this is a good place for it. It rises yeah. up pretty steeply on either side, and so there's rocks that you can absolutely pronk off of. Yeah, yeah. I've lost uh, I've lost faith in my abilities, so I'm trying to like get it back, you know? Yeah. <laughs> on account of falling down the cliff. <laughs> Every time you pronk, you feel a little like twinge, like you're being squeezed from these basalt ribs, and you're like, oh, got to pronk again. <laughs> so a lot of pronking. That's my love language. Yeah. Pronking. <laughs> cool rock check. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what, are, what am I adding? What am I adding? Nature? Uh, I would say this is nature. <laughs> nature? Uh, I, it can be nature or survival. Or survival. Yeah. They're the same score. There you go. I recall that. So, cool um, it's a cool rock chick. It's important. That one time she found one that was like a potato, right? And there's that and other time where she half. found one that was great. <laughs> it killed us all with 13. <laughs> like 13. You find a nice rock. Yeah. Literally a piece of nice. It's just um, a little bit tan, but it has an inclusion of quartz that goes right Exciting. through like a little, little right angle chip. Um, and so it's a it's a nice rock, nice. literally and figuratively. Nice. Yeah, Wonder. literally. So, <laughs> what? Which is not paying attention. Okay. Make a uh, whatever you want. You can make a sleight of hand check. Um, <laughs> you, does my Cheshire watch see this happening? <laughs> Constant awareness of Cheshire. We'll find out. Past perception 19. Oh, no. No. 27. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Super, I have no idea. No, zero ideas. If you want to know what's in the rest of my pockets, I can tell you right yes. now. <laughs> All right. So, uh, in my pockets, I have the cool orb that totally has an air elemental in it, most likely. Mm -hmm. um, I have a a uh, different gem that looks like it has some sort of um, like liquid in it that uh, is equivalent to a 50 gold piece diamond apparently. That one. Um, <laughs> and I also have uh, a vial of goop that's still in my pocket because no one's taking it from me unless I gave it to Billy. I might have given it to Billy. The red goop. I don't think you gave it to Billy. The red goop. Um, and uh, one half of the potato rock <laughs> because the other half, because it was split, and the other half was given to Ori. I'm taking mm. that. Half You're stealing the same rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's how I find Minka. <laughs> oh, I do have a pearl. I forgot to write it down. I also have the, the pearl that I stole from so full Cheshire. Circle. Yeah, so full circle. Yeah, full circle. We've started an economy. This is so much like the early campaign one with Morwen and Gunter just stealing yeah. things back and forth in a cycle. So we've got to start things off with a little uh, inter-party sharing. Oh. Now you guys are going to, by level 10, you'll be building houses that nobody actually needs and then demolishing them to uh, acquire the overall like land profits, yeah. and then you just build houses again. Yeah. It's great. So, we'll have Yuppo. Uh, <laughs> this is the there. real estate campaign. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I would love a real estate campaign. <clears throat> Sim City. You make your way through the Valley of Fireflies, some of you um, acquiring more things than others, and Minka, though you are the only one to pick rocks up off the ground, you end up with fewer than you started with, which is odd. But you must have a hole in your pocket. <laughs> and you do remember, um, you never fixed a hole. You never found one, but you remember thinking that you might have one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
You pass through the trees, the bright green leaves interspersed with soft, cream-colored flowers that smell sweet on this air, but... Ori, to your point, you get more and more excited because you begin to recognize elements of nature. Mm. And before too long, you clear this thick, tangled area with the just oaks. The, the thick, tangled area <laughs> mix into the honey locust birch <laughs> and uh, have grown into like branches that snarl to make a canopy above the path. Uh, just beyond that, there is a tiny hut. It has been constructed by the side of the road. Uh, right next to these rocky outcroppings that are kind of the western wall of the valley. This structure seems to have been made of rough-hewn stones formed from the stones uh, from the kind of rock shelf behind the interior mortar that has actually been um, kind of created with some kind of pebbles and things, but most of the pebbles that had formed like the the actual wall previously with mud now have been laid out to form a nice little path that leads to the, re the regular road. The garden is gone. That really like wilting, terrible garden is gone. And now outside of the house grow these bright, big toadstools, um, almost like four or five feet tall. Oh my God. Uh, Let's so go. Maybe one second here. Um, you actually see progress. Yuppel the Grunt. He is just off to the right of the hut. And you can see he is holding Tron over. He's holding a bow. Uh, and there's like a target that's been set up just a little bit further away. Way. And as you like trot like over, you see, like, the porch, you see the porch of this little uh, under construction hut. There's no roof on the hut yet. It's still very what much under construction. Um, but you actually see Patty as well. This, uh, oh, Patty! Oh! <laughs> you made it! He has worn leather, uh, 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 worn leather armor, still the same that you had fought him in. Although you can actually see around his ribs and around like his side, he has bandages oh. that are slightly stained red. Um, oh. Not from you guys. Yuppel, however, unhurt, and he turns around and he just goes, Oh dear. Uh, I remember you. You were supposed to help me build a house. Uh, so sorry, you know, they. Uh, but it's great to see you. I guess it's okay to see you. Thanks for sending uh, Patty. Oh, I made you this. An apology for being unable to make you a house. Uh, I brought make you a, some mustard greens. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> At advantage. A bit, a bit wilted. I'm also gonna go ahead and because greens. I am not a very charming person. Well, I'm glad that uh, you made it here, Paddy, and it seems like you've done a lot with the place. Seven. Okay. <laughs> We'll get back to that. For you, you say that to Patty, and Patty, like holding his ribs a little bit, just kind of nods and he just goes, I don't know what this guy would have done without me here, because he's hopeless. Mm. And Yuppel just goes, I made it just fine. Just people would get sick around me, is all. Uh, what do you want? What happened to your. Uh... What the bandages for? So Patty, the one who has these bandages, <clears throat> just kind of turns and he goes, We've been having trouble with goblins. They've been coming mm. further and further south. They're trying to chase people out of the valley. Mm. Is that is that uh, Gath? What's his uh, fire fire stone? Ignis Fireborn. Is, yeah, that him. Yeah, is that who? Who's you can sending see them? Patty and Yuppel look at each other and they just kind of like shrug. He is we, still a problem. It was it was happening before. It was, it's gotten worse, though. Uh, Patty goes, yeah, no, it's gotten a lot worse, I guess. I mean, I didn't live here before, but uh, if Yuppel was able to survive this long without me, <laughs> it must have been getting worse recently. Yeah. He gestures to, like, you can see probably, like, an arrow wound or some kind of a slash across yeah. the side. Um, but he gestures a, a little grung thumb over to Yuppel, and he says, but I'm trying to teach him to defend himself, and he's actually not a terrible shot, so oh, that's good. there's hope yet. All right. I am a little worried because I'm hurt, and we've had goblins sniffing around for the last couple of nights. You could maybe, uh, well, you gotta lay hands on him. Mm -hmm. I could. Maybe. Uh, Just be careful. Yeah. Is there a way you can do it without touching me? Make uh, a small. Well, <laughs> don't want you to get I, I can. Uh, it'd be more effective if I put my hands on you, but I could do it from afar Should if you'd you prefer. do it with, like, gloves on or something? It's really for your safety, is it mm -hmm. not for me? So I would appreciate any kind of help. Mm -hmm. And so even from afar would be great. Yeah. So, like, gloves? Would gloves work? Yuppel goes over and he goes, 
gloves will work just fine. Nobody gets sick as long as they're wearing stuff. That's why I wear these. And he holds out these big, like, leather gloves that have now <laughs> almost gone. You would actually, very, very similar to uh, ones in which uh, we're wearing can be in one. Good, good. Uh, but yeah, he's <laughs> Start like, fashion trends. It's like any grunt that lives in society just has to adjust, and it's really sad. But, uh, Someone should start making, like, grung sized gloves. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like there's an a market entire industry. <laughs> As a style, it's just become this over large. <laughs> um, I, I think Minka would cover her hands in um, some probably some of her own cloth and then cure wounds. Okay, no on problem. Patty. You cast cure wounds on Patty. You can roll healing. Patty does not have a tremendous amount of health, and so this is probably going to do a lot for her. Yeah. Okay, let me see. Your wounds is fucking sky. Oh, completely Oh, maximum, absolute maximum, including the bonus from the sickle. Twelve points to Patty. Twelve points. Patty has fourteen points in total, so twelve is a lot. All of a sudden, the bandages kind of crinkle and crack and grow dry as your magic seeps through them, pulling every possible element of like uh, moisture and anything that could possibly be used that just is pulled into this grung's wound. And you can see he just goes, whoa. He just touches himself and he slowly unwinds the bandages and you can see a little scar on the uh, yellow grung body, but no active wound. And he goes, thank you. You're welcome. That was pretty good. I consider it a continuing apology for our presence in your life. Yeah, well, we tried to kill you guys too, so I think that's you see, oh. but even. Okay. <laughs> Look at how far we've come. That's great. That's, you, you, I, you know, Yapo, I'm gonna help you with this uh, finishing up the roof here while we're here, because I feel bad about leaving you before. We really need to get back to the Emerald Spire. Uh, last time you did this, I didn't get anything. Me see. So, Come on, if we all help, it'll take no, no, like a, a half the busy. time. Patty no, says, it would be really you. nice. I mean, we're both really small, and it's hard for us to even lift the stuff up to that height. Just a couple, it'll take a few hours. They will help balance out our terrible karma. That's true. <sighs> Yuppel goes, the real heroes are the people who help in small tasks That's true. every day. God damn it, Yuppel. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Let's make it quick. So, oh, also, um, what day is it? <laughs> Saturday. The 14th, uh, 14th of summer. Oh, no, um, can we confirm what yeah. the crocs? <laughs> yeah, I would like to know, like, uh, like actually, what year is it? Oh, yeah. like... uh, by the way, have we gone way forward in time? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> it's the 14th of summertime, 1481 TA. It's... Is that the same date that we knew it to be it's before? Two days after he okay, left, okay. so, <laughs> you know, about the right amount of time, okay. uh, including your time in Petrichor. Uh, but he turns around and, and uh, kind of looks at all of you and he goes, well, it only take a couple hours if you're all going to help. Thank you so much. This really means a lot to us. Uh, uh, and, and maybe I could cook you some food. I, I can grow mushrooms now because because Patty helped and I, and I stopped trying to grow. It, it turns out that my poison was poisoning my garden, and so I was never really going to be successful. Yeah, the toadstools seem to work. Uh, nice. All right. I'm right. gonna. Well, let's get Patty to stands let's get to build. Pulls on like some of these leather armor again. Now able to actually wear it. And uh, you all set about this task of building this grung house. Cheshire no. You I can shape stone, right? Working on my next epic, okay. the Oblivion. Maybe just ah. <laughs> okay. So, so manual labor is good for us. Real artists must always be working, and so yeah. you take this opportunity to really set a soundtrack for the work, which is just as important as the work itself. Uh, and so this is part of like this kind of uh, quick montage. <laughs> That's the soundtrack, or the oblivious. <laughs> Clap the fast forward. So button. this is a group skills check. Billy uh, is going to just contribute an average roll. So for the three of you, each of you has a, a chance or an opportunity to do something to help. Uh, Ori, what is it that you're going to do to help? I'm going to start uh, laying out, well, 
is there even a structure for the roof yet or is it no like totally. stone the stone walls are compared to the mud quite secure but they've just been kind of stacked and you can see there's a few bracings in the corner to like begin that process but no no real roof all right i'm gonna finish making the frame of the roof to okay. hold it up and then uh, probably spend a little bit of time looking for uh some larger um branches to cut into halves to make kind of slats for the roof because i want it to be like better than a thatch roof a little more sturdy to go with the stone sure um, there's a lot of uh, uh kind of logs around here and there's actually a few places a little bit like back from the way that you came yeah. where they've cleared some of these away to actually begin the process already so you don't even need to cut down any trees there's already wood that you can kind of harvest cool. um and that makes it a much quicker process as part of this go ahead and make a survival check guidance nice with guidance <laughs> D4. Alina, what are you doing to help? I'm gonna, you don't uh, have to. You can also just... No, just no, no, I'll it help. It's helping long. means we can get out of here faster. So um, I think Alina is maybe like nailing Survive. stuff, but using Mage Hand to hold the nails so that she's Fantastic. not going to cut her fingers. <laughs> what was that? <sighs> with guidance? Yeah. An 11. <laughs> Well, I don't want to know without guidance. Just <laughs> give it to me raw. I just. Oh my god! I switched the die. How do I undo that? Got guidance <laughs> that is so still <laughs> fucking. Hot. We'll get back to that. Trash. Go ahead and make a survival check. Um, what you can add your Arcana modifier or your uh, yeah. So survival, so an arcana check then. This is oh, wait, also add also add the modifier that you get for your arcana check. This is to kind of symbolize the mage hand. That's so nice. Um, 19. 19, okay. So we'll get back to that in a second as well. What are you doing, Minka? So, um, seeing Ori starting to like try to like do things on the roof, it's not looking good. Yeah, um, Mink is gonna. Things. Um, use mold earth because she doesn't take stone shape today to do more things. Because <laughs> um, this wasn't on the game plan, <laughs> believe it or not. You, were, you didn't plan. think that we were going to finish this house? Gunner <laughs> even specifically said oh, this is the realest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Move that truck! <laughs> Basically, she's going to this at all. <laughs> do a similar thing to when climbing the, um, the, the cliff face to give like footholds okay. and handholds for Ori to like stabilize and to help like okay keep things. that pre that will prevent disaster mm -hmm. assuming that you're able to do it well mm -hmm. using stone shape go ahead and make an arcana check that's fine i'm gonna guidance myself because i'm gonna need it 13. A 13, okay. <laughs> wait, wait, it might be 14. Wait, 14. Okay. okay. So, Alina, with the help of your mage hand, you are the most proficient builder here. Yeah. You and Patty actually really set the pace for this. Um, with the sort of jaunty tune of Cheshire behind, it makes pretty quick work of this, and you actually find, in ways, this reminds you of some of the kind of communal building projects in Thornholm. And so, as grumpy as you were about yeah. all of this, there is, like, a niceness to, like, this project, and there's music again, and, like, this is kind of more like home. I feel like Alina's been to more than one barn raising. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thornholm, everything is a barn raising, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> it, it always progresses from barn raising to party to fist fight yeah. to party yeah and uh, that's generally and then the black party after the barn raising <laughs> yeah and then not necessarily the fist fight but we'll see where things go yeah so you and patty set the pace you guys are, are uh building up these walls while ori struggles to create like a frame you guys are already creating like the sides that will actually have to go onto the roof you really build out the roof while ori almost falls with minka really like Shaping Earth, shaping Earth, shaping Earth to keep them up, and it's it's a it's a process, absolutely. And every time that you do it, Yapple is also like, "Oh, not there! Oh, not that stone! That's my favorite one!" and just like complains the entire time. It's all temporary. The stone will go back to normal. <laughs> uh, but Ori. With Minka's help, you do not collapse the roof on yourself. <laughs> Low bar, but I'm glad that I'm With you and Minka's rolls, it does take you a little longer than you expect. <laughs> 
three hours go by, four hours go by. Alina, you and Patty finish your stuff up, and like this should be done. You're having an okay time, but you look over, and Ori <laughs> is like <laughs> smoking a pipe, taking a break. Like, it's, uh, it's getting there. It was looking pretty good. Yuppo is sitting there, and he's just like, I don't know. The mud was really nice, and it regulated the temperature pretty well. And um, <laughs> we'll make some windows. You're sitting there, and just like everything has stopped. It's it's getting on like five or six hours now, and so you're you're starting to progress into the <sighs> evening. However, if Alina same. was wearing a watch, she would be checking it like oh, every yeah. five seconds. Yeah, you look at the ring, mm-hmm. yeah. but uh, <laughs> it, it eventually, after about Watch six hours, so with no loss of life or limb, <laughs> you construct a roof. Hey! I imagine at the end, because like on the inside, like with any exposed wood, like Drew crafting like little like designs and lattice patterns and stuff. So not helping structurally at all, yeah, making yeah. it pretty on the inside. <laughs> Turning that house into a home <laughs> is just as vital. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna guide myself because I can't roll oh, in double digits today. 15. Fifteen. That's pretty good. So you, you grow out elements of this, and, and it's made out of wood and stone, and so plenty of material to work with. And there are like little elements of seeds that are growing into the ground from the elements of like multiple. As you like shift through it, there's been multiple attempts to create gardens here, and so like there are just kind of inert seeds that have fallen, and because of the sort of toxicity of the soil, have not really been able to grow. You extract those and implement them into the actual wood. So there's like little bits of moss that actually make it so um, it almost has like a skirting around it and really nice little foresty hut. Yapo really could live his best life here. And it comes out pretty well. So much so that um, as it begins to transition into the evening, little fireflies begin to find places to sit and rest within the moss. And so the inside almost has, though there is no lantern anymore because it got sort of destroyed in the last hunt, uh, there is now light coming from the green fireflies that kind of hang out amongst this place. And so it's quite nice. Yeah. You are so pleased with yourself. <laughs> hey, this is this is what it's all about. Ori, at the end, <laughs> even Yuppel seems like he's pretty impressed. And he goes, I, I was really hurt when you all said you are going to help him. I know, him. I know. It was very, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I think this might even withstand a whole raid. I, I hope so. So uh, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. No problem. Can we go? Well, Shouldn't we at least stay for a meal? Come on, we have to just I make really good mushroom food? soup. I would love to try a bowl of your mushroom soup. Do I remember how long it takes to get from here back to the Emerald Spire? So uh, like an hour or so. Close, I closer rem- to like six hours. Oh, yeah. I would remember that because of my thing, but... Okay. It's like an hour. So at this point, we might as well just stay the night. <laughs> Question? You, I mean, you... Have, yeah, yeah, probably. It's really up to you. You have probably like 10 hours until you need to rest. So we'll uh, have some supper. We'll head back. We can travel through the night. We'll be there in the morning. Oh, we're going to mess up our sleep schedules again. This is terrible. Fine, we'll have dinner. Th- thank you, Apple. I would love to try <laughs> some of that mushroom soup. I mean, it doesn't really sound like you guys would, but I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. I would love to. I love that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, um, I'm stressed. <laughs> I know what that's like. I haven't had friends in years, but, but I'll, I'll, I'll make some soup. Hang on. And he goes and he like goes around to the other side of the house and like the western side, a little pot hang over a, a fire and him and Patty stoke a flame and they begin to like boil mm-hmm. some water and stuff. I pull a group a little closer and like as quietly as I can go, um, I can reverse poisons if anything goes wrong. So we should be okay. Because I'm so you don't be afraid to eat anything. Might have the I wasn't afraid yeah. until now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some mushrooms already are poison. Right. right. But I, think, I didn't want to say anything. How sure are we that he knows which mushrooms are what? poison and which ones are? Can I take a peek don't at the just, mushrooms to see uh, uh, are those mushrooms that I'm familiar with? Yeah. Do I get like Yes. Yeah. yeah. Give the poor man a chance. I am, but I'm just saying I'm ready in case we think we're wrong. <laughs> My lord. What's that check? <laughs> On the dice, I have two eights. Nice. Which is a for total. a ten. Nice. Okay. Um, you have no idea. <laughs> 
It's hard to tell. I, I don't know what kind of mushrooms they are, but... <laughs> Do I know what kind of mushrooms they are? Make a nature check. Ooh, a 17. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does so Joe know what kind of mushrooms they are? <laughs> I invented them, but I have to go back. They're soft something. He Hundo P has them in there, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're soft wall mushrooms. And the thing oh. that is most... Uh, you don't know anything about them in terms of, like, um, healing mm -hmm. or any properties, but you do know that they do originate in the Feywild, mm -hmm. so they certainly probably have some kind of a, um, magic property that is intrinsic to it. Mm -hmm. uh, what it's most well-known for in cuisine is that it does taste quite a lot like beef mm. and so this is one of those things that is actually a great meat substitute mm. um for what it's worth is you can eat them they're not poisonous okay. they won't do anything unless you're allergic to mushrooms soft what mushrooms uh soft wall mushrooms wall yeah okay so i oh. I'll, I'll eat it first but if, oh, no, if I I start to... no no those mushrooms are actually fine even if he's been sticking They're fine. They're delicious, uh, um, apparently. Well, I okay. I've never had them. I'll try it because I'm hungry, but mm -hmm. just if anything happens. I'm ready. Is there anything that you're doing? <laughs> we spend a lot of time talking about food uh, so, <laughs> that we're going to eat. Yeah. yeah. Patty, uh, <laughs> have you heard about anything yeah. from the Emerald Spire? No kept appraised of what's going on around here besides the goblins? Not really. I mean, I planned on going to the Emerald Spire a little bit more, maybe Hopewell, but yeah. this guy kind of needs me. Yeah. He, like, gestures over, and you can see right. Patty, he's, like, stirring the soup, and then this dr the spoon just drops, and he goes, oh, oh that's a third one. Oh. And he goes back inside, um, and you can see <laughs> Patty just goes, no, no, the, the heat will definitely, well, the heat will probably deal with it, so don't worry about it. Okay. Um, well, but no, you know, I haven't really been able to go. Yeah. Well, I was hoping that it would be kind of at some point a more uh, mutually beneficial relationship when uh, I sent you here. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's a he's an okay guy. Yeah. You know, I mean, it gives you a place to stay. Yeah, and he definitely needs some help. Yeah. So, yeah. well, maybe once things are a little more settled, you could start like selling the mushrooms and the something. You know cultivate uh <laughs> well i figure because we're on a road and this does head from here wraps around uh -huh. to UX when the come fall comes yeah maybe we could set up some kind of a store or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know but that's that's later we need to actually build yeah. like a house that has yeah. a well, roof now you've got one yes and so thank you very much oh, for that. of course yeah well all right um i don't the soup looks good. Yuppel turns around like with the fourth spoon. Yes. The soup, yeah, he's good. <laughs> the soup is ready. You all gather around. You can have a meal. Oh, oh, there's a woe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's oh, a woe. Talon. 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 He says, Talon. let the we all get Make diarrhea. After you all shit yourself. <laughs> 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 oh, the soup is very good. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> lovely dinner. There's nothing wrong with the dinner. You don't get sick. It is the only thing, if something could be said is wrong with it, is they don't really rinse the mushrooms super well. And so there's a slight grit to it. Yeah. It's still earthy. It's still good. Um, it's just like not the cleanest. It's just, it's a it's a very. Uh, like chowder with a little yes, sandy Yes, very, very much. <laughs> no. um, but it's good. And you have no problem, no gastric uh, uh, distress from it. At the end of this meal, it's getting close to like seven or eight o'clock at night. You are in proper like dusk and nighttime mode. Uh, you've had good food and to a certain element, especially with this well, have not really been keeping an eye out on what's been happening. Mm -hmm. Goblins. Worry. With a, does anybody have a passive perception above 19? No. Oh, no. It's I'm just you, right? Pizza, the pizza, pizza, yeah. No, no, I'm saying, is there oh. anybody also 19? Pizza, pizza. No. Okay. So, Ori, you are the one who notices this first. There is a shifting and moving through the trees and through the brush. And then through it, you see a little beaver kind of poke its head out. Uh, the two long teeth kind of like chitter a little bit, and then it jumps across the path and continues to run. 
and then your eyes track beyond that, and you see glowing through the bush two bright, white, large eyes set into green skin. Into green skin? A goblin. A goblin. <laughs> And because it is 8.15 or about to be 8.10, this is where we're going to take a quick break. Mm -hmm. um, would you like to see a little visual perspective? Sure. Let's I want to see a full Right on schedule. We're about to we're take a break, but first we're going to get a visual plan. perspective. Yay! We're about to fight some goblins. We made it to Apple's house. Oh, yeah. yeah. We had a delightful, <laughs> we, we finished building the roof on uh, Yuppie and Patty. <laughs> I, Patty I made it. I did hear that. Yeah. I was around for that bit. It's good. So that's what I'm saying. Now we got to protect them both. Uh, with our lives to make sure that they make it through this goblin attack. Mm -hmm. But, uh... I'm leaving. And then we'll be back. <laughs> so, Goodbye. all according to plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Losing things here. Oh! Somebody help go assist. Oh, goodness. Sorry, this that is... Fly fit my face. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy, howdy. Did something fall? Yeah, I can grab it. No worries. Let's clear some space. I can pull this out of the way. There's this. Are you bleeding? Some space doesn't need to be down. Uh, we no. The house building is done. Then we ate soup. Oh no. Um, but they had told us. They had told us that goblins were like harassing the residents of the valley. Yeah, and we we sort of heard that, and then we were like, let's build a roof. Um, and here we are. You know what we should do about that? Construction. <laughs> and civic planning. Now we have a more fortified and defensible position. It is true. So yeah. for what it's worth, I didn't anticipate you guys engaging in roof and barn raising. So, and so the roof <laughs> is not right? quite there. Yeah. But I do, it does have a roof attached. That is a complete house. Nice. We did it, guys. Yeah. Guys, did, was this tree it. falling over? Awesome. No, all the trees no. that are falling over are up. They just they they fell in transit. <laughs> this is a quick what? camera here. This for thing's probably up. So those stones that you see are sort of like the stones set into the path. They're like mm -hmm. level These with trees the are, are falling over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few trees that are uh, are actual fallen trees. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, you can see everything. Yuppel's little house. Yuppel is the blue one. Patty is the orange one. And you are all actually including Yuppel and Patty around, no, around oh. the little pot that has the boiling mushrooms. Oh. All right. And then there's the little mushrooms in front of this house too. Uh, however, so happy. because, let me pull us back here. Because it is 8-12, we're going to step away for a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to roll for initiative. Oh, man. Yay. We'll see you in just a little bit. Oh, we're gonna get this.
<laughs> and we're back. Thank you for sticking with us through the break or joining us if you are just doing that. Um, we are going to roll for initiative. Go ahead and do that for us now. Um, I am calling everyone out to the fact that there are goblins approaching. Okay, we're going to get to that in a second. He's calling us out, everybody. <laughs> out, goblins! God damn it. <laughs> Does not help that, though. Better than mine. <laughs> Oh, I feel like I need. I just can't win today, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to. Uh, no, no, I gotta, gotta switch it up. Switch it up here. New dice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, Anybody okay. natural twenty? No. Twenty-five to twenty. I was just enjoying the soup too much. Twenty to fifteen. Eighteen. Ooh. Okay. Nice, nice. Okay. Love that. <laughs> Anybody 15 to 10? 14. 14 for Ori? 11. 11 for Minka? Okay. Alina, where are you? Nine. And Bill? Wow. Six. You guys must really like the suit. Four locks. <laughs> All right. So, just right, making sure I have this soup. straight. The goblins are starting us off. Oh, followed by Cheshire, followed by Ori, followed by Minka, followed by Alina. Oh, goblins! Followed by Patty and Yepple, followed by Bill. Oh, Patty and Yepple! Yeah, of course, of course they, they are. are. You, it was just going to be Yuppel, but you guys got Patty up for you, too, so. Oh, yes. All right, so to start us off will be the goblins. Oh, I love that he's down. Oh, it's okay. I still like it. I just like raiding on this. Yeah. Okay, so starting with the goblins. All of them, I think, because you guys just put yourself in the perfect place for this, actually, uh, are going to take arrow shots. Now, these goblins, for what it's worth, Ori, as you recognize them and they, you lock eyes with them, you see this one, the ears first drop back, and then he like looks back and forth, recognizing that you've kind of identified them, and then you hear this very familiar cry from the other side, as all of a sudden voices just call out, watch out, <laughs> these goblins uh, let loose this hail of arrows. I would say, Ori, you are taking two, and then... Yuppel is taking one, no. is taking one. God. So Ori, no. that is going to be a 15 <laughs> and a 20. Uh, then, well, the 20 gets it. Uh, ooh, ooh, uncanny nice uncanny, uncanny right dodge. I think I got that now, right? Uh, you tell me. I don't, I'm not yeah. playing your character. You are taking four points of piercing damage. I'm taking two. <laughs> you take two points of piercing damage. This little goblin arrow kind of sinks into your shoulder. You yank it out. For Yuppo, that is going to be a 16, which is definitely a hit. Ooh, Yuppo's taking max damage. No! <laughs> If we kill this is you. what happens when we bring people into our lives. <laughs> so yep, yep, yep. one of the arrows, <laughs> <and> <laughs> or you, and you pull it out, and you're like, "Ow, oh, that's stupid!" And then you see the exact same size arrow whistle past you and hit Yuppel straight in the chest, and it goes deep. You see the feathers begin to soak up the blood, the fletching absorbing it, and you can see he grabs it. He's looking rough. He's not down, but he's rough. Oh my God, help! <laughs> <laughs> he like sinks down to what he like drops the bow. Yuppel's not looking good. Uh, but that is the one against Yuppel. And then Minka, as your attention is called over, does a 19 hit? Hell yeah. Arrow, great. Um, that is going to be, Ow. except for damage, it's going to be a three points of piercing damage. All right. As you take one of those small. So it's ting, 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 and two of you are like, ow. And one of you is like, oh, and almost dying. But no problem. This uh, goblin barrage of arrows streaks out through. And then all of them shoot again. These no. goblins seem to be a little bit more elite than the last ones that you fought. You don't say. The ones that we fought in session one. <laughs> Jesus. Ori, does a nine hit? Okay, so the the, first, the two that are targeting you miss. I'm running out. Minka <laughs> does a five hit. Oh, no. And then against Yuppel, it is a ten, which also doesn't hit. Oh, so thank the Christ. first wave of arrows, every roll above a 16. Second, the high roll was a eight. So they are not doing well. The second round of arrows, as you all like dive for cover, the mushroom soup goes over. People like pull up little elements of chairs and things, uh, and you're able to like sort of fend off the second wave of arrows. That is the goblins' turn. They're gonna stay right where they are. Ooh, actually, don't actually. Okay, Ori, 
None of them are hidden for you, but you watch as all of them kind of duck and draw back and attempt to hide. Uh, the, the highest roll there was a 13, so I think for all of you, you can actually see them still. Mm -hmm. But that is the goblin's turn. Cheshire, what would you like to do, Ori? You are on deck. So, oh, sorry. Are they all fairly obvious where they are? You can tell they're all in that, like, little copse of trees. So you may not know their exact location, but within 10 feet or so of where they are, absolutely. Okay. Um, my first order of business, I'm going to go hide myself in the bushes around the kind of back side of the house there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you rush around to the back side of the house. You squeeze yeah. over. <laughs> not like... Like, oh, like here. Corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, like, kind of in that little nook where the barrels are, the place that I had designed for somebody to hide in. <laughs> <laughs> Almost so, as if you know us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, there is this area where there are barrels and bags and different things that have kind of been accumulated in the back, and you go and tuck yourself in. And... On my way by, <laughs> Bruce is going to say, Billy, go get him. It's inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little inspiration as you are passed by uh, Cheshire. Anything else? Uh, that is it. All right, Ori. It now it is your turn. What would you like to do, Minka? You're All right. Back. So yep. seeing Yubble get absolutely destroyed, uh, I am running forward to try and take the brunt of the attacks <laughs> to protect Yubble uh, while um, drawing my bow, and I'm going to uh, insightful fighting the one that is uh the one that attacked yuffle okay sure uh that is a natural one so cool uh, is a, whatever you roll you'll beat it all right cool um and then i'm gonna fire uh fire my shot at that dude it's distracting uh, oh it's upside down use this one <laughs> i'm gonna use this one Oh, buddy. What was that? That, that, use this one. that <laughs> arrow better not just like zoom around and hit Billy in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Natty was it a natural one? one? It was a natty one. So that you boy. fire at this goblin and it strikes the stone behind, it chromes off, and Matt, you see right in front of you that little beaver? Right, right in front of you, you know, really right close to the edge. You can pull him off the board. No. Wow, you're looking right at him. He's right there. I know, I know. I'm just like, <laughs> he's gone. Your arrow corrodes. I'm seeing right, of right off like two now. different trees, <laughs> right off one of the uh, the rocks, and this you hear this little as it just dies. In the oh, that was so cute. How oh, dare that you? That is uh, your turn. Anything else, Ori? And no, I'm just creatures sobbing already. Like, take me. <laughs> That is your turn, Ori Minka. What would you like oh, to do? Oh, Alina, you are on deck. <laughs> I'm going to chalice form okay. because clearly we're going to need the healing to keep you alive. <laughs> you turn and you look down, the arrow's like almost all the way through him, and it's not very large. And so, yeah, you spread into the celestial form, the chalice spreads out from you. I'm going to cure wounds on Yubble. Okay. So, this is going to be a couple of dice rolls, like, because I have thingies that do thingies. You do have to use the do thing. It's wild. <laughs> so that is. It's gonna get the bonus too because he needs it. A total of twelve healing. Is, all of the bonus goes to him. That is mm -hmm. way more than he needs. You see Yuppo suddenly Shoots just like, him. he screams up a little bit. The blood dries. The arrow, like he, he has to like pull it a little bit and there's a little spray of blood, but he pulls it out and he goes, oh, oh, thank you. And he goes, he reaches, he pulls the bow up. He's ready to go. Let's go. Anything else, Minka? Um, I'm going to move my, the beacon of myself away from the apple and towards the house. Okay, yeah. So hopefully if we're going to shoot a glowing object, we'll shoot and somebody less slide likely Minka to around to Yuppel. somewhere near the, wherever far Minka can move. I can move 35. 35 feet. Yeah. Um, I Minka, that is your turn. You rush Just around like, the gauzy fabric like, trailing behind you. On the barrels? <laughs> well, I, do I have to roll to stand on top of barrels? I don't know. There's like rocks and stuff. Like that. I, I will. So put me climbing. like. The barrels the are designed to be almost like steps with those rocks, so you can oh, certainly okay. climb on them. Nice. Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So you get <laughs> over on the barrels. You can look matters. both through the windows of yeah. this house and around if you need to. Yeah. So you definitely have line of sight. That is your turn, Minka. Alina, what would you like to do? And then Patty and Yepel are on deck. Oh, I didn't roll for pedal. I'm sorry. I always forget oh, to do pedals. And pedal. 
Um, she got a good roll. Ooh. Um, so that's... it's probably good that you didn't roll for battle. Probably cause... good. Yeah, we'll see how long she can last this yeah. time. Um, Dude, all right, she... pedals initiative is nineteen. Um, oh so goodness. she can just nice. she can just come in around the next time. Okay, we'll have her up at the top, right above the goblins. Right. Um, okay, so Lena is going to come like. Seven, back here behind these bushes, and then she's gonna do an Eldritch Blast. Um, do any of the goblins that I can see um, look particular, like look like beefier than the rest of them? They all look beefier than the ones that you saw before. These I just are mean, like, are any of them like the boss? No, okay. not that you can see without Command making a specific squad. check. Okay. Um, you see like ears and little bits of eyes and things moving. You don't really see them specifically right. right now. Well, they're, right. they're trying to hide. They just did really bad at oh, it. Oh, bless their hearts. Yeah. So I'm going to shoot at the one that Ori just shot at. Yeah, go for it. Um, Eldritch Blast. That's a natural 20, son. Oh, very nice. Nice. Go ahead and roll damage. Double the dice. Working on it. So Ooh, many both things. Two down. That so that's very. Well, twelve points of damage. Very nice. And then I'll send my second Eldritch Blast toward him. Um, Twenty-two. Yeah, that hits. Um, seven points of damage. Alina, the first one strikes this goblin. You watch as the arrow just goes harmlessly by them and caroms off. You hear a squeak in the distance, but you focus in on that goblin. You throw the first Eldritch Blast, which almost knocks them to, like off their feet, and they're up in the air over the brush, and you can see them clearly now. Scrawny, just regular goblin, and so you throw the other bolt, and it just finishes them off. You watch as it blasts them right in the chest, and you hear this, what shaka? <laughs> it just collapses into the stone and falls inert. That goblin is dead. Which one is that one? Uh, that would be, yeah, that one's fine. All right. Oh, Anything else I'll leave in particular? <laughs> uh, um, and then, yeah, I'm gonna, as a free action, I'm going to telepathically instruct Petal, who is invisible, to go, um, to go distract one of the goblins. Okay, no problem. So you instruct Petal to do that telepathically. That brings us to Patty and Yuppel. Billy, you are on deck. Patty uh, and Yuppel. <laughs> I think they are going to hard merge. Move 25 feet. So Yuppel, filled with newfound courage. Let's go. Turns. Mm-hmm. 10, 15, 20. So oh, middle. Wow, <laughs> and Patty is just kind of like, no, wait, and kind of follows over here. Filled with a small amount of courage. <laughs> he's small. He's that's, all, he's small. He, that's all that can fit. He's at capacity. He's at capacity. So both of them, with Yapo now picking the bow up, fully healed from Minka, he draws an arrow, Patty draws an arrow, uh, and both of them are going to fire at the goblin that is dead ahead of uh, Ori. Tracking. Both of them rolled 15, so that is going to be 19 for both, which both hit. Nice. These two grong are working in unison. Yeah. Oh, that's a frack. <laughs> <laughs> and together, they deal 10 points of damage to this goblin with wow. two other little arrows. So now that's the arrows tiny. are like, there's <laughs> tiny arrows flying back and forth. <laughs> Ori, you are a full-size person sitting in the middle of a miniature battlefield. You're on one side, <laughs> and on the other side, you can hear Yuppel go, oh! And then, <laughs> it's very different but with, with this uh, dynamic happening. That is their this. turn. That brings us to Billy. All right, uh, Billy is going to go forward. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, and then cast Hex, Blades, Curse. This. You got it. What? On the. Nope. Yeah. That guy. Uh, fuck this guy. Fuck that guy in particular. One and then time. follow that up with. Uh, Focus fire. Do it. Uh, two beams of Eldritch Blast. Yeah, go for it. Roll your no ads, so, you know. Uh, and we are going to add this, this lovely D8. Oh, there you go. Use that inspo. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, that's. Um, so the first one. 
Hey, it'd be helpful if I remember what my spellcasting modifier is. It's charisma. Where is it? There we go. It's like you just got here or something. Oh my god. It's a nine. Nine? Nine is a miss, unfortunately. Uh, and then the, the second one is a 16. Meets a pizza. Meets a pizza. Go ahead, roll damage on that. Alright. Go with this one. Ooh. That's that's one. <laughs> Plus it's it's one. Okay. <laughs> uh yeah. That's it? Just one? Just just one. Okay. Uh, leave me alone. <laughs> on the other side of the battlefield, completely flipping the camera on. This goblin is like oh, fighting. Oh, sorry. Plus my proficiency there bonus because Hexblade's curse. That's, that's much, that's much better. Four. There you go. Still better. Still better. All right. Not a funny moment anymore. Every little yes, bit Yes, not counts. funny at all. <laughs> and he tells count. Billy. No. All right. <laughs> no. Uh, Hexblade, the Hexblade's curse wraps around this goblin. And you throw the Eldritch Blast. He's hiding. He's behind a tree. Uh, you blow elements of the bark away, and that definitely shrapnels into him, but not full damage. Uh, that is your turn, Billy. That brings oh, us to the top. Seven, the because charisma modifier. Hey. <laughs> Much oh. better. And so with seven, I mean, that is a sizable amount of damage. As the tree has elements blown away from it, it cracks and one of the large rotting limbs overhead snaps off and just bonks this goblin right in the head and that deals most of that damage. Anything, that, that's your turn? That's my turn now. All done for sure? All done for sure. Okay. I've done the math. Okay. That brings us to the top of the round. Um, give me one second here. Okay. Like I need to read all of the spells so, instead of just using the cheat sheet. Nice. That brings us to Petal, <laughs> followed by the goblins, followed by Cheshire. All right. What's so Petal doing? Petal's going to use her whole action to just get over to the goblins. Yeah. Uh, Right. She gets to about here. Okay. And she's still invisible. So she just flies, the little wings beating fast, invisible. She just kind of tucks right up next to this oak tree. Mm -hmm. Anything else? She's probably feeling real happy that she's not dead yet. Yeah, these little arrows are huge. It's like ballista arrows for Petal. Yeah, and yeah. So this is like siege weapons going back and forth. This is saving Private Ryan again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is and longer so, than she usually lasts. Yeah, so no, she's absolutely. pretty good about that. So she flies over there. That brings us to the goblins. So there are still, I believe, three up. <laughs> And so, uh, the one that is screaming, Wachaka goes down. Uh, there is one, two that are going to take shots at you, Ori. <laughs> Ori, that is going to be a 22 <laughs> and a 19 to hit. Let's go with it. Yeah. Ori, the first one is going to be six points of damage. The second one is going to be seven points of damage. Oh, wow. That actually... Ouch. They rolled terrible damage, great attacks in the first round, but um, neither here nor there. There is one other grung, or sorry, one other um, goblin, and he is going to take a shot at uh, Minka, you're glowing real bright and even from around the house. They just can't quite get to you. Uh, I think they're probably going to take a shot at... Alina, probably you. Um, you do benefit from half cover over there. Right that is going to be a 14 to hit, and so that is a big miss. Uh, this little um, arrow. Oh, half cover. Half cover. Yeah. Right. So this thing right into the tree in front of you uh, would have hit you were, were you not in cover. Mm -hmm. But uh, that is the first round of attacks. The second round of attacks. Ori, that is a natural 20 and a 12. Oh, shit. Uh, the 12 doesn't hit, but oh, shit. I'm going to be down. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You're taking 11 points of piercing damage. Total? Yeah. Double R. You only got hit once. Yeah, that was double. Okay, I'm uh, not down, And this but... tiny arrow strikes you right <laughs> underneath the armor. It goes through the, the little like, seams, Aww. and it gets right into the element of your uh, armpit, where it slightly <laughs> nicks the brachial artery, oh. and you can feel oh. blood begin to wash oh. out of a very small <laughs> wound. <laughs> <laughs> still feel pretty <laughs> fine, yeah. but now I'm just like, oh, I'm like <laughs> Yeah, now these small cuts are beginning to add up. Uh, however, that is all of the goblins. Uh, the only thing that they're going to do is, as a bonus action, attempt to hide. Okay. 
the two who are closest to you, Alina, the ones behind that like patch of grassy hill, mm -hmm. those two, you, they just disappear. You watch as they seem to hide pretty well, enough so that Ori, you do not see them either. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one you can see just ducks down. He's not hiding behind anything, and so no longer, not really hidden. Uh, he rolled a four. Does Petal see them? She's pretty close. What is Petal's passive perception? Mm -hmm. I think it's 90? No. Um, <laughs> nothing can get past Petal's okay. cave. <laughs> doesn't see those. As long as she is sorry. So that brings us, uh, that is the goblin's turn. That brings us to Cheshire. Or you're on deck. What was that sound? <laughs> Me dying. I need to see that they're all within like a 30 foot space, you would say. Uh, give or take. Give I mean, it's hard take. to see because you can't see two of them at this moment. But from the last judgment. Yes. Okay. Uh, two of them, yes, at least. In that area, two of the best of my knowledge to catch all of them. Okay. In a 30 foot cube. <laughs> I think I don't, I don't know that you can get the one in the I very don't know. very edge. <laughs> I think no. so. is, this is having a rough time. As and usual, it's a sacrifice we're willing to make. <laughs> that are visible. You wouldn't be able to get both. Maybe Petals use the apology crown. Because <laughs> it's the largest square. That works. Yeah, I would say yeah, probably that, that one makes sense. Very character makes plans. Sense. <laughs> no problem. So Petal can go ahead and make a saving throw, I assume. It's a wisdom what? saving throw. Actually, two goblins move. Is this center. like a... The petal is outside of the range, just out. You don't really... Know, but but the goblins that. are closer. They're clustered further there, and Petal's invisible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, four. <laughs> it's a sixteen. Ten and a five. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah, side um, of the table's rolling hot. There are sparkly, pretty patterns within that area that have charmed all of you. Can you go ahead and uh, charm those two goblins? The petal pass. <laughs> okay, so Charm Bridget Petal as well. Incapacitated has a speed of zero. And luckily for Petal, still invisible, mm -hmm. uh, very much Charm, but Petal is just like, wow, this tree. <laughs> and you see, you hear something that goes from like, I made it to the oak tree, and the oak tree has really nice bark, and there's some moss, and the moss has some little flowers on it. <laughs> you just get real specific about that one area. Uh, but right. that's great. Yeah, uh, Cheshire, anything child. else? Feel right. Alrighty, <laughs> Jasher, that is your turn. Ori, what would you like to do? Minka, you are on deck. Maybe um, one day. <laughs> I can see these two, right? Yep. I'm gonna use my bonus action uh, to seek out the others with a perception check. Sure. Uh, that's gonna be a 25. With a 25, you absolutely see all four of them all five of them, all six of them, as you look and look around the battlefield, off the ways and rushing rapidly towards you, although still about 60 feet off the battlefield, you see two large shapes and one larger still behind that. Can I make out what they... The 25, the two closest ones, seem to be goblins mounted on very large, unusual-looking bulls. Uh-oh. And they are rushing towards you. Uh, going to... Turn my attention to them, <laughs> and uh, using my longbow, which I think gives me the range to hit if they're 60 feet off the map. Right? This is they're 105 feet. feet away from you right now. Yeah, I think it's within the 120 range. Feet, 120. Right? Yeah. Go for it. Make your attack roll. Um, so does a. And uh, I'm going for the mount specifically because okay. I'm guessing, you know, I'm trying to slow them down. Sure. Not. Uh, uh, I think it's an 18, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, 18. 18 and 18 hits. Cool. Uh, that's going to be. 13 points of piercing damage. 13 points of piercing damage. Not bad, not bad. Okay. So this arrow streaks forwards and through the darkness, you can see it digs into this creature. You hear this grunt and this growl and you hear like goblin chattering back and forth, uh, but they're still coming. 
All right, and uh, I'm shouting out as a free action. Coming this way. <laughs> well, you do that. As I fire. <laughs> yeah. On my turn, I'm going to be like, what's coming this way? <laughs> so that is your turn, Ori. Minka, you okay, are on deck, and way. then we will get to those folks on the path. All right, so. Oh. This hell's deep, but we're the baddies. <laughs> I think we just were always the baddies. <laughs> Mika, what do you want to do? Yeah. So I'm going to um, peek around the edge of the house. And so the only two goblins I can see are the ones that are illuminated by Cheshire's pattern, right? Correct. Okay. So I'm going to um, move forward. Okay. And I'm going to get about even more. Yeah. I'm going to get even with Ori, but still. But right in the front of the house? Yes. Gotcha. Um, I'm trying to not put my glowing self to bring attention to the most vulnerable people on this map. Okay. Here? Uh, no. No, but like in front of the house. In front of the house. Uh, yeah, 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 right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then I'm going to look at Ori and just say, just don't die and cast healing word on Ori. Oh, no. <laughs> With die, this magical word streaks across <laughs> like starlight. And as it strikes, you do feel the healing energy infuse into your body. Oh, good. <laughs> and the bonus, because you were within range, it yeah. didn't make it very far. Well, you roll that when you go get the next guys. Oh. Um, so that's a total of seven because I rolled like absolute beans. Every little bit counts. <laughs> <laughs> still, still feeling those. <laughs> Can I tell you, I do take a lot of pleasure whenever you see the it, it really does. It's it is right. by far it's the best part of every session. It's delightful. Um, okay. Especially when it's preceded by awe. Yeah, I love awe beans. beans. I love that. Uh, this streaks out and hits you, or you feel the healing suffuse into you. You feel a little bit better, but you do see these creatures barreling towards you, so not as much as you could. And then, since there's not really much else I could do, because I know that they're... Wait, pause. Cheshire, have you used hypnotic pattern yet? So all I know is that they're glowing, right? Okay, so because I have no idea what hypnotic pattern is, sure. I'm going to target the most visible of the goblins that I can see. So. Sure. One of these two. Yeah, yeah. probably the and one right then, in front of you. Yeah. yeah, and just guiding bolting. Yeah, make your attack roll. <laughs> nice. Oh. And it's um, incapacitated, so, so it's at advantage already, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. And it um, has a speed of zero, so it cannot run away. <laughs> okay, not an actual point, but I'm pretty sure that hit, because that's a total of... 27? Oh <laughs> 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 I have max damage! <laughs> uh, uh, I don't think think so. <laughs> 12 damage. Let me just double check the plus on that. Yeah, let me know. Um, and that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. Like so you fire this uh, <laughs> guiding bolt out. One arm throws the healing word. The other one throws the guiding bolt. Drop blood in the suit of armor. <laughs> that is your turn. You'll let me know what that is in a second. Yeah. For the goblins that are heading down this path, on their turn, these mounts, which as they draw into view, Alina, you see them first. There are these two huge wolves with the faces kind of rounded and blunted and almost goblinoid looking in and of themselves. Uh, they have two goblins who are both mounted on top, almost like they are surfing. Are these goblins? They're standing on top of these uh, wolves. <laughs> and both of them maintain their acrobatics checks. They are, and they're doing this because the mounts are going to double move, they are going to exit, and then they are going to take their full turn mm. on the board. Oh, what nice for them, isn't it? So, yeah. you set up these guys as they come in. What? Yeah, so it's... Was... <laughs> trying to uh, 120 so actually they can get of... past you. Oh. They're going to go around, like, on the side here, so not invoking an attack of opportunity. Naturally. That one's going to curl this way. I think probably this one is going to go around this way back and this guy is going to stop right here oh, <laughs> this goblin hops off I right here horse. if we survive Wait, is it this really a horse or is it a wolf right here those are exactly what they look like okay okay i was also wondering <laughs> and the one that, that hops case, off of the yeah. horse itself oh that is not uh -oh, a big guy not a goblin. And you can see, unlike the other creatures, goblin looking, there's goblinoid features for sure. But the skin, much more tan, much more uh, humanoid in complexion. Some of you have seen hobgoblins before, and that is what this is. He wears a little bit more fine armor. He has a shield on the back, and the sword that he wields 
almost identical with the metal patterns, almost Damascus-like, of the goblin choppers that you had seen previously. Mm. Uh, but he jumps off the horse. The horse leg comes to a stop. The two wards rush off, and the goblins leap off. The wards continue on. They can't attack because that is their full movement, but the goblins certainly can. And so, uh, Ori, both goblins are... Actually, one goblin is going to rush up to you. Um, probably going down. And with a loud wachaka... <laughs> That is a 25 to hit and a 15 to hit. The 15 misses, okay. the 25 definitely hits. You are taking eight points of piercing damage as he jabs you with this little goblin dagger and he yanks it away, letting a gout of crimson out. Uh, the individual who is back there, he has this sword in one hand, but Ori, he reaches back and he pulls out a javelin and in one motion, underhand, flings it towards you. Uh-oh. And uh, that is going to be an 18 to hit. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Any dodges or anything hits. going on over there? Oh, uh, That I one's could... a ranged one. Yeah, but it doesn't matter at this point. That is going to be 10 points of piercing damage as this javelin digs into your thigh. <laughs> as you're like, I'm getting dodge, and you wheel around and it hits you through the other leg. <laughs> it just, just digs you into the ground. You're almost yes. pinned in for a second. You feel it dig into the ground through your flesh you just fucking blow right here. before you block it. <laughs> you are unconscious? Yeah. Fantastic. You're down. The javelin is in your ass. Wiggle on the ground. <laughs> Look. However, <laughs> <laughs> that is all of their turn. That brings us oh. to Alina. Yuppel and Patty are on deck. The goblin took 11 damage. 11 damage. Okay. Not 12. <laughs> that brings us to Alina. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm gonna Eldritch Blast the Hobgoblin. Yeah, go for it. Actually, no, first I'm going to Hex him. That's okay. Gonna Eldritch Blast. Do you have Hex? Uh, I don't, you mean us, yeah. I think we have one, yeah. If you don't mind just popping that on that, dude. I'm gonna go ahead and swap oh, this Lord. pack in okay. here Hex. with... Yes. Alright. Bamboozle. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, there so that one's gonna Would you like be... Die? I would rather bamboozled at the moment. <laughs> Can't do I that. identify this. 22 to hit? 22, 22 hits. Alright. I'm actively making... Oh no, min damage! Let's see. Uh, so, so. So that's going to be 10 points of damage, and then I'm going to send a second bolt at him, and that's a, that's a, tw- a 12. A 12 does not hit, unfortunately. Okay. That first one absolutely strikes. As he leaps off the horse, it almost knocks him off his feet, but he skids down on the grass. He pulls himself upright. Uh, anything else, Alina? Yeah, um, as a free action, I telepathically um, uh, criticize Petal for <laughs> not helping more. <laughs> You criticize, but even through that, you can hear, okay, that's cool, but there's this little bug and it's really red. <laughs> and she's like talking about this, still very charmed. Um, that is your turn, Alina. Mm-hmm. All right, that brings us to Patty and Yuppel. Uh, Yuppel is going to, seeing this massive wolf like growling, frothing at the mouth, you hear him just go, oh, and the courage seems to have fled. He's going to turn and using his full action, he's going to run back to his house. Oh, and I believe you can only move 25 feet. Yuppel is the blue one. Oh, and uh, that's going to be 10, 20, 10, 20. He can only get to the front door. And so, I mean, I, I mean do you want to attack of opportunity? <laughs> oh, no! Okay, just checking. <laughs> Yuppel runs by you, and you see he's, like, washing for the door. Mm-hmm. However, Patty is going to turn, and seeing this one goblin right in front of him, drops his bow, pulls out this small short sword, uh, and takes an attack against this goblin. That is going to be a 14, which... It's going to be a miss, unfortunately, if these were less less elite goblins. And so he swings, and the goblin just dodges out of the way. This goblin wearing this bright green or bright uh, yellow clothing. Uh, that is Patty and Yuppel. Yuppel can't move up with opportunity attacks, or Patty can't. So, Billy, what would you like to do? Petal is on deck. Uh, is Billy in, like, attack range of the Styrewolf? Uh, you are, I think it's 10 feet away because it's a diagonal, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so if Billy were to move... You would not provoke an attack of opportunity at this time. E. Oh, I can't get... I can't get... I can't get into... Tr- oh, okay. <laughs> This is a roller coaster. <laughs> so you rush uh, over. Uh, Billy's going to um, 
You know what? Yeah, why not? Let's green flame blade the gabo. Yeah, go for it. Make her attack roll. Get him. Which wolf is the one that I hit? Which wolf is the one that you hit? The one that is, um, like, closest to you, Matt, the player. Yeah. Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen. With a fifteen, as you go by and swing at this very elite goblin, unfortunately, that is a miss. The green fire overhead. This goblin ducks out of the way, almost Matrix-like. Um, Patty is also pressing forward, and even with both of you striking, this little goblin, very acrobatic dodging. And he's nails Billy. Gonna hex him. <laughs> there you go. So or, reverse order of operations, but at the very end, you hex him. Uh, and uh, let's give him disadvantage on Constitution checks. Okay. He will be poisoned. So he <laughs> will is... crave the mud. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the right color drug. No, I know. Oh. <laughs> so no problem. That is your turn, Billy. That brings us to the top of the round. Petal followed by the goblin. So Petal is charmed. This is charmed effect like... at the end of the turn. Uh, I think so. Typically, that's how it works. No, spell ends. An effective creature, it, it takes any damage, or if someone else uses an action to shake the creature out of its stupor, but there is no repeat save. Dope. All right, well, she's just gonna look at the bark some more. Fantastic. Just <laughs> stares at the bark, really enjoying it. It's great. It's not a ladybug. It's actually, it's a mite. It's a tiny little mite, really, really small. Oh, this is probably her really, favorite really, really battle of all time. I mean, she's lived two whole rounds. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really is. That is Petal's turn. That brings us to the original goblins. Original goblins. So the first two who are in very clear, visible, like, pattern range, just kind of staring. They're holding he's weapons, no which are kind of having... Oh, yeah, he's one left minka hit. I oh, struck yeah. one. He's, 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 glowing. Glowing. he's glowing. He's glowing. He's glowing for a different so, reason now. Glowing. So you can see, he looks down, he goes, Grobby? Watch out, guys! And he pulls back and he shoots uh, Minka at you. Yeah, I understand. Uh, There's going to be two attacks. Okay. Uh, that is going to be a 23 and a 24 to hit. They both hit. Yeah. Almost natural 20. That is going to be 13 points of piercing damage. Total? Total. See, why would you want Yuffo to have And those dig into you as he uh, fires away, still glowing bright. There is the one that is charmed. That one just is in a stupor, kind of staring. Petal is looking at the tree. This other goblin is looking at the tree. And then the, the other two who are hiding are both going to take sneak attacks against Ori. I'm down. Oh, no, you're down, bro. <laughs> Can you layer? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, just, sorry. I'm, I'm bamboozled. He's got a bamboozled ring on him, so, but it's not enough. So, actually, uh, <laughs> Tina, can you move them up onto the hill? They're going to, like, crest onto the hill. Those These two? Yeah, you're Tina. And uh, from no. there, they're going to take shots at, I'm going to say, probably uh, Minka. 5, 10, 15. It's, it's going to be a disadvantage for that guy in the back. So flat for one, advantage for the other. The one at advantage rolled a one and a four. So that's going to be eight to hit. No. And the one at uh, flat is going to roll a nine. So from far, far away, they fire, and you don't even hear the arrows as they land somewhere in the distance. Oop. They got lens flare. They got lens flare. Yeah. <laughs> that is the goblin's turn. That brings us to Cheshire. Or you're on deck. Um, seeing this not playing out, dropping hypnotic power okay. and the goblin that is now hexed uh crown of mad oh wait unsettling words so it's a minus two <laughs> okay it's on the next saving throw it makes and crown of madness which is a wisdom save okay this is the one that's hexblade cursed this is the one the that Billy just... Oh, the hobgoblin. Okay. Hobble gobble. <laughs> gotcha. Or, I, I did the, the, gobble, the little gobble. green guy. Gotcha, gotcha. Hobble, hobble, hobble gobble. gobble. So hobble gobble. Okay. What are you rolling? What are you doing with the... It's crown? a wisdom saving throw. Minus two. So I rolled a three. He gets plus three. He gets minus two, so four. <laughs> That's your DC, right? He needs a beat. Totally, it. absolutely. He needs some beats. <laughs> what happens to him? Um... So he is also charmed. Well, charmed in this way, a twisted crown of jagged iron appears on its head and madness glows in its eyes. Collapse under the weight. Um, so you could just take magic effect to <laughs> differentiate it. I'm, I'm gonna just. 
Ivy is the one so. that wears the crown. Yeah, the crown. Must use its action before moving on each turn to make a melee attack against a creature other than itself that I mentally choose. Okay. And so he's gonna come hit the Gabo that Billy hit. Did you come okay. That's on his turn, right? Oh. Yes. Okay. Mm. Come here. Okay. Please remind me if I forget, because I, I very well might. But no problem. That is your turn, Cheshire. Um, and then just remaining hidden where I am. No problem. Ori, what would you like to do, Minka? You're on deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to continue yeah. to be downed. Okay. And uh, I, make a I would like to continue well, being so. down. <laughs> Easy enough. I guess I'm gonna get a four. Nice. Oh, no. That's one death failure. It'll be Matt, we here. You are approaching a familiar place. <laughs> 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 he has a set tones of a familiar old man. Uh, He's just been following us around. Or he just, He's just been waiting. Yeah. Minka, what would you like to do? Um, <laughs> seeing that Ori is down and more no, people are there. showing up, I'm, um, on my knees with the arrows I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna cast Healing Spirit at Ori next to Ori. Uh, probably at his head and like kind of it's gonna like kind of cut his head. I need to get you guys all grabby arms. I know. Yeah. We'll get one for each side of the table. Yeah. Perfect. So, I do not want to share. I was gonna say no, personal grabby no. arms only. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, with the healing spirits, it is going to do a healing upon its summoning. Um, and you're casting it in the space that Ori is down in? Yes. Nice. So it's going to target Ori. Very nice. Um, so he will hopefully remain alive for longer than uh, <laughs> five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Ori, as this uh, healing spirit takes its place right on top of you, you burst into consciousness, you turn and you look up, and you're just like looking right up between the legs of this like glowing dryad. <laughs> Truly a your time. <laughs> it will be... So that's seven, and he's within 30 feet of me, I think. I'm just yeah, quite yeah, yeah. Okay. So, that's... Ooh, okay. yeah, just um, barely. So, yeah, so six, seven, so that's a 13 points of healing in total. There All right. Is. There we go. So healing floods into you, celestial light, the glowing green of the healing spirit. Anything else, Minka? Um, I am going to produce flame in my hand. And then that move. So I am behind that stool. Okay. I'm gonna move myself behind the stool because I think that's as far as I can really go. Yeah. So (laughs) to have some semblance of cover. Yeah, you duck behind the pot. Um, It only covers like roughly your torso, but. Yeah, and I'm also massively glowing. So there's no hiding. No worries. (laughs) That does bring us to the second group of goblins. So. Wolves. Oh, it's cold. It's cold. <laughs> oh boy. So he has to go out <laughs> this guy. Yep. And that guy is going to stay where he is. Okay, so. Um, oh, and actually, I guess. I know why. We're just going to canter backwards a little nervously. Uh, but. The wolves, one of them is going to attack you, Ori, the wolf, and the goblin. First, this word uh, makes two bites attacks, bites attacks against you. I still said that wrong. <laughs> it is a 16 and a 20 to hit. Uh, yep, those both hit. Right. You are taking six points and six points of piercing damage. I'm going to uncanny dodge one of them. Very nice. So as it snaps at you, this wolf, you duck underneath and it paws at you and almost knocks you over, but less damage. Oh, nine total. And I'm almost right back where I just was, but I'm still up. And the goblin. next to the healing spirit now. (laughs) It's true. The goblin takes his two strikes against you, Ori. Come on, miss. That is a natural 20. Cool, I'm down again. Almost certainly. Almost certainly. (laughs) So, Ori. The first one is eight points of piercing damage. I'm down. And the natural 20 is going to be 11 points of piercing damage. I'm 
also down. <laughs> and so you fall down again. You get up and you're like, oh, immediately <laughs> the wolf bites you. Does the as you are like pulled away and like it's, it's gnawing under your arm. Another, an no, automatic it's not, it's not an automatic failure. Okay. Because um, it's part of the same attack. It's oh, okay. Attack. okay. Uh, but it, yeah, it stabs you and you just go out again. Uh, that is Zach Still Goblin on my that knee, wolf. but just now I'm stabbed. <laughs> the uh, other wolf is going to take a uh, is going to just kind of tuck into Billy and take two snapping attacks. Billy, that is going to be a twenty-one and a nineteen. Uh, with the twenty-one, I, I'm going to look at the look at him. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold, hold please, wait, 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 wait. wait. It just says two. Okay, attack roll is okay. Today. Uh, with the twenty-one, I'm gonna look at him and say, <laughs> "Try again." Uh, silver barbs. That is going to be like an eleven. No, so just the one, and I'm giving myself advantage. Very nice. Uh, so you are taking a grand total of six points of piercing damage as it snaps at you, and you flare your eyes at it. You can feel the crown within the hair kind of creak and grow almost larger, and as it does, the wolf almost seems to take this second uh, thought and backpedals just for a moment. Uh, that is that wolf, and then the goblin is going to take an attack against you as well, Billy, or two attacks against you, but not rolling d6s. That is going to be a 6 and a 22. 22 hits. You are going to take 8 points of piercing damage. Cool. And the hobgoblin rushes over, and Billy, you see this sword with Damascus patterns in it get raised high, and then brings it down on the sky. Actually, you know what? Would lead with uh, pulling the shield around and trying to shield bash the goblin with the first attack. <laughs> we'll manage to miss with that. The goblin's shorter than, than Billy, the original target, shifting midway through as the crown takes hold. Misses with the shield, but then comes overhead with this sword and also rolls a two again. And so for a total of eight, swings and misses, the crown like twisting and sh like grabbing him one way, grabbing him the other. He doesn't seem to be able to even focus on the goblin, uh, but that does take his turn. That is all of them. That brings us to Alina followed by the Grunt. All right. Everything's going sideways right now. <laughs> um... Let's see. So I'm going to, as a bonus action, move this hex, um, which is the wolf that's got damage on it. The one that is closest to the healing spirit, yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm going to hex this guy. Okay, the shadows around it. Um, and then Eldritch Blast. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah, make your attack rolls. It will. <laughs> oh, okay. Will uh, you? No, that's, no, I don't think I will. Um... 12 on the first one. That is a miss. And on the second one, even worse. No, that's not worse. Jesus Christ. 15. That is a miss too, unfortunately. And so both of your Eldritch Blasts, one misses, the other hits, but this tough, rough exterior hide seems to almost shed it without a problem. Okay. And um, with the hex, I always forget this part, I get to give him disadvantage on a specific kind mm. of thing. Um, so we'll do with wisdom. Okay. Um, <laughs> Anything else, Alina? Yeah, and then telepathically, again, I'm going to criticize Petal for not helping enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, are you able to criticize, like, in a way that deals damage? Oh, but she would die anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only no, way it's, that... it's not a vicious mockery yeah. situation. Okay, no problem. Um, so this is criticize. more just uh, e emotional damage. <laughs> you deal some emotional damage. Kettle doesn't seem to notice for what it's worth. Yeah. That brings us to the grung. Yupple now like takes the last five feet of movement into his house and at disadvantage through the window is going to begin uh, throwing things at the wolf because he left his bow outside. Oh, uh, so he's going to throw a cup no. at disadvantage because it's improvised. Uh, that is going to be a total of six. So you guys hear through the sound of battle, a little smash as the teacup breaks on the ground. Um, that is Yupple. <laughs> that is going to bring us to Patty. So he's in Patty still armed swings at the Goblin right in front of him. That is going to be a 17 to hit, which does hit. There's little block beds in there. <laughs> and so you see that Goblin get hit the very first time, but not for very much damage. The Goblin is going to take a save. Whoops, whoops, that's gone. Oh. <laughs> and the Goblin saves against Grung Poison, so 
That is the Grom. Is that the you goblin that Kara cursed? Car Car yes. <laughs> Disadvantage. Still makes it. Damn. Um, it was lower, but not by much. So uh, this goblin gets jabbed by the Grom. They're going back and forth. Billy, you fight this one. The goblin is beset on three sides at this point, and so quickly becoming a little bit overwhelmed. Um... Da, 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 da. That is Patty and Yepple. Billy, what would you like to do? Pedal, you are on deck. <laughs> for what it's worth. Okay. <laughs> Green flame blade. <laughs> Go for it. All right, I'm God damn it. 16. Who is it against? The, the hexed. The, bits the little goblin? Uh, that is a miss, unfortunately. Very, very close. <laughs> Uh, and then just like look over and see that Ori's down again. It's like, get up. And that's a healing word. Yeah. <laughs> Ori, you are ripped back. <laughs> I'm still on my knees. Uh, eight just... points of healing for you. <laughs> nice. Eight points. Very nice. Yeah. Eight points I for keep, you. Like, breathing my last, and then like. <gasps> <laughs> your soul keeps leaving your body and then slamming back in. Yeah. Having a <laughs> time. There's like the angel the uh angelic group that is in like the elf heaven. It's that weird like I can't remember what the body was called. <laughs> and they're all like, come home. Oh no, come home. Oh, come home. Let's just go. <laughs> um, but no problem. You feel that healing flood into you and you come back to consciousness. <laughs> Anything else, Billy? No. All right. Pedal is engrossed in this nature scene that's happening. Still, there is one she's back. She's Wait, back. oh, right. You broke the thing. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, you have Pedal back. How dare you? Sorry. Still engrossed. Uh, um. <laughs> but willing to break away. All right. So she's going to. She's like, new plan, new plan. Because she's now seeing that we're kind of focusing on the wolf. So she's going <laughs> to. Uh, she's going to fly. Like. Just like kind of over here to get away from the gobbles, and then okay. she's gonna shoot him with her, shoot this wolf with her short bow. Go for it. Um, <laughs> I want goblin in the back, just to blow him. <laughs> Living his best life. <laughs> yeah. So it's that advantage, uh, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's taking advantage. Pedal, of that pedals, advantage. pedals got advantage. No, they're going against the wolf. No. Yeah, she's going. Oh, she's going against the wolf. I thought she was. Uh, twenty-three to hit. Twenty-three hits. Okay, one piercing damage, yeah. and he needs to make a con saving that is a throw. Count con pedal. saving throw DC. It's gonna be close. Seventeen, I think. Oh, it's not gonna be close. Yeah, they fail. Ooh. Um, by uh, um, did they get a five or lower? Uh, their total was twelve. Oh, five or lower. 17 to five, right? No, no, like literally five or oh, lower. Oh, oh. Um, okay, so he is poisoned for one minute. All right, very nice. That's good. Yeah. Good job, Petal. Can you put that on the war? Thank you. She looks a lot around proudly, and Alina did not notice. <laughs> <laughs> so this tiny little arrow in, and you hear through the telepathic communication like a, I did it, but you really can't see it. There's so much happening. And Ori, from where you are, as the arrow strikes into this creature, you hear this deep voice just go, as it speaks, this weird quasi-goblin. The warg. Yes. Oh. That is da, 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 Petal's turn. Anything else with Petal? No, she's good. She's celebrating. All righty. To the original group of goblins, the two who are mounted on that hill, seeing everything that's going down, going to take some shots. Probably, uh, I'm going to say one is going to take a shot on you, Ori. The other one is going to take a shot against Petal. All right. Can I survive a shot? Ori, that is an 11 to hit. Yes, that misses, finally. The other one shooting over at Petal uh, is going to be a 16 to hit. That hits. Okay. Did I see so you hear Petal's go, I got it. So, <laughs> did I see Petal's feet of noble yeah. Yeah. striking? I think we're like, like literal <laughs> feet. I, like, yeah. I, guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically. Call me Petal. Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> Petal just bursts into a little bit of glitter. Um, that is both of those goblins. The one who is glowing bright is going to take an attack against. 
she probably would. against you, Minka. Actually, both the other two are going to take attacks against you, Minka. Return. <laughs> one is a natural 20. The other one <laughs> is a nine. Nine does not hit. Minka, you are taking 12 points of piercing damage. Still alive. As this uh, streaks out from behind the tree, this glowing bright goblin, as the uh, burst like hits it and it begins to glow, it wheels towards you and fires a little arrow that like follows the exact same trajectory back and strikes you almost right in the shoulder, digging deep. But that is all of the goblins from the original group. I think the two who are... The one who is glowing is going to attempt to hide. <laughs> Uh, that is going to be very low, and they're glowing anyway, so that's not helping them a ton. The other one that just... Yeah, that one's going to hide as well. Still not very good. So they're attempting to hide the ones on the hill or not. That is all the goblins. Cheshire, what would you like to do? Or you're on deck. Minka, you are in the hall. No, Minka. Don't die. <laughs> <laughs> It's very slow. It takes like two turns to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Healing word that's eight points of health back. Nice. Even the sarcasm, the sarcasm, <laughs> even the sarcasm within the healing word does not seem to stifle the overall power of the spell. Yeah. Uh, Cheshire secretly likes Minka. Anything else, Cheshire? Just stay here. Okay. Very easy to do. You stay hidden. Ori, what would you like to do? Minka, you're on deck. At the beginning of your turn, uh, you heal five points. Yeah, yes. okay. We're back in the double digits, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so Goblin and uh, Weird Wargy Goblin thing. Yeah, um, that's the name. <laughs> I am going to stay within range because I don't want to waste that and die. Um, steady aim. I'm going to pull out the rapier and hit this dude. Okay, yeah, the make your wargy, attack roll. Wargy wolf man's. He's poisoned. I hate when that happens. I'm sorry, bud. <laughs> Doesn't... 18 hit? And 18 does, yeah. Oh, cool. Absolutely. Okay, great. Awesome. Jesus. Now I got a sneak attack in. Because uh, I steady it for advantage. Okay. No. Uh, nice. All right. That's 14 plus... Uh, 19 points of piercing. 19 points of piercing. And that is against the one that is right... Oh, against the ward? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, nope. That's it. Okay. You sink the sword into this creature, and as it's, like, kind of poisoned and reeling from this tiny arrow that struck it from behind, it has this curse, the shadow that's digging at its skin. It's a little bit distracted, and you take that opportunity to dig the blade deep between the ribs. As you pull it out, it looks a little hurt. Plus two more damage. Sorry, my sneak attack went up by a die. Ah, it looks a little more hurt. So that is your turn, Ori. Anything else? More hurt. <laughs> uh, nope, that's it. All right. It loses two more blood and Minka. What would you like? <laughs> um, I'm going to cure wounds myself. There you go. Because I am still a little hurt. And I have learned that if I go down, no one gets you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lie. Uh, Chesh is a bad Cheshire bad. and uh, Billy actually do pick up the slack quite a bit. Um but it looks like we're going to need a lot of it. So we're functional. <laughs> um, Best things for getting out of me, apparently. I mean, OK, so I heal I myself for 10. Very nice. And then I heal Ori, because Ori should be so deep, just with the yeah. I like how Ori is tanking, not through virtue of the fact that he is a tank, but virtue of the fact that he's just dying again and again. Yeah, so you get seven points back. All right, I'm, I'm feeling range. like almost yeah. half He's having better. the opportunity to leave, but instead he uses steady aim, which reduces his movement to yep. zero. Yep. <laughs> uh, I'm going to yeah. move 
back or round. Because I gotta hold the line. I guess. <laughs> I'm going to try to start. Uh, I just move forward again because I'm like, oh, dang it, I can't hide behind this. And people are without a range. Move me forward, uh, like 50 feet. And then I'm going to cast. Mold Earth behind the warg and the Ooh. goblin Ooh. to make that area of um, it's a five foot cube. Mm-hmm. I don't so of difficult terrain. Okay. Nice. Oh, it's just five feet. It's just five feet. It's really it's very little. <laughs> it's like that one cube in between them in front of you is now difficult terrain. <laughs> this one. Yep. Just nice. right there. Yeah. It's very <laughs> helpful. <laughs> just a big cube of earth. Yeah. You just made a mountain out of a mole. <laughs> <laughs> you made a, a mole out of a street. Um, but no problem. You got anything else? Uh, that is my bonus action. And I, no, actually, no, I don't do that because those are two actions I, I cured myself. Damn it. Ah, uh, yes. JK, that so didn't have So pull that earth back. It goes. Pull that earth back. Damn it. it. Um, instead, <laughs> with my that happens to everybody. The turf. Um, instead of my bonus action, I'll just rotate the healing spirit behind Orimore. Okay. Do we a dollar? <laughs> That's from I think it was a coin. I didn't. It's not going to keep these. I don't. I don't trade. Oh yeah, because that'll, that'll help. Patty was like a base for something in the win- oh, sea of ice. Because Patty's yeah, Patty's right there. Anything else, Minka? That's good. Nope. That's all I can do. All right. That brings us to the second group of goblins. So, Hobgobbo. <laughs> For Crown of Thorns, does, this, does he get a save at the end of his turn? I believe he does. So I'm going to do that for his last turn right now. Oh, that's a good thing that Billy's hits have connected. <laughs> there. Oh, no. They're otherwise Billy. just going to stay mostly in the same place. Um, okay, so first, at the end of that uh, Hobgoblin's turn, that is going to be a 24, which I imagine saves it. Yes, it does. So oh, they are really out. Indeed. <laughs> they, like, shake their head and seem to snap out of it quite quickly. And they wheel around, and Billy, suddenly, you are the one who is surrounded. Hi. Billy, first, uh, these are turning tables. Actually, we'll start with the two goblins. So, or actually, we'll do it the way we've been doing it every turn. Ori, first this warg takes us two bite attacks against you. Yeah. That is going to be a 15 and a 7. Uh, nope. All right. So it snaps. It snaps, but the poison is starting to take effect. The shadows are pulling it back. It seems to be too distracted to really land a hit. But from the other side of you, this goblin will take two strikes. That is going to be a 14 and an 18. Uh, the 18 hits. With an 18, you are going to be taking four points of piercing damage. Two points. Uncanny dog. Slashes at your shin, and you manage to pull it out of the way, just barely getting nicked. Uh, now we swing over to this little group around you, Billy. First, this Borg taking two attacks against you. That is going to be uh, a 10 and a 5. Nope. Okay, great. Love that. So it snaps again and again. Uh, you pull out of the way, and as you move back, the goblin who is next to you is going to take two attacks against Not you. Not against uh, Patty, who they've, they've been in. No, it's not against Billy, but it doesn't matter because I rolled two natural ones. Yes. Oh. Take some of my luck. Whoops. Have oh. that. Enjoy it. I'm so okay. sorry, but no. So <laughs> this goblin with two natural ones, Damn. not one but two, pulls around. He's just been getting attacked by this uh, hobgoblin with the crown of madness. And so confused, betrayed, the goblin wheels around and just digs his dagger into the hobgoblin. That uh, one becomes a natural 20 against the hobgoblin. Nice. And that is going to be 11 points of damage. Nice. Yeah. Dealing more damage than any other. Oh, gobble. Shush. <laughs> or sorry, this is the Hobgoblin. I did 19 last time. It's the Hobo and the Gobbo. <laughs> against the, the Ward. Cheshire continues oh, against to the manipulate yeah. battlefields. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so that is the Goblin. That is the Ward. Now the Hobgoblin. Uh, kind of a little confused by that. But turns to you, Billy, takes the shield and tries to bash you off your feet. That is going to be a 19 to hit. Certainly does. Go ahead and make a strength saving throw, please. 12. You are taking 11 points of, ba- of uh, bludgeoning damage, and you are knocked prone. Now that you're prone, this hobgoblin is going to take two attacks at advantage. 
Uh, the first one is I rolled at advantage a one and a two. Yeah, you did. Ooh. So that's going to be a miss. The second one, that is much better. Uh, that is going to be a 26 to hit. Certainly does. All right. With that 26, you are going to be taking... 14 points of piercing damage Ooh. as this hobgoblin That's wings nice. the sword around, wheels it over his hand, and then stabs, jabbing it right into your stomach, pulling it out. They wheel it back around, ready to like bring it down again. Uh, but that is their turn. The hex on the uh, goblin drops. We go. Oh, yeah. Is this we have hexes all over hex the place. Hexblade's curse is uh, not concentrated. So that is, however, I believe all of... Oh, the horse goes five more feet backwards. No. <laughs> He's just getting nervous. Don't go. Uh, that is all those goblins. Alina, what would you like to do? Patty and Yepel are on deck. All right. My friend Billy is prone. This will never do. Um, so I'm going to... Um... Can I try to climb over these bushes? Yeah, go ahead and make an acrobatics or athletics check. Acrobatics, please. Yeah. Good thing you practiced your pronking. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, 19. Okay, no problem. With the 19, you bunch your legs up and you give it the biggest pronk of the day. Whee! And this time, your pronk is true. You leap over the <laughs> Oh my gosh. The superhero leap. Yeah. <laughs> Except right. it leaves this little clack as you leap off the, oh, the stone. <laughs> Um, all right, and then, um, so I'm gonna get right into the middle of this group, um, and I'm going to grab Billy's, like, ankle and thunder step on out of there. Very um, nice. Which no. will hit... You can go back. Just, you need to I just got there. <laughs> um, this, the warg, the goblin, and the hobgoblin, but not, crucially, um... Patty. Little ground man. Yeah. So um, we're going to thunderstep over here. <laughs> Deposit okay. you next oh. to... What kind of save is that? The warg is almost definitely going to make it. Uh, it's like a 27. Spell, 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 spell. If it's a con. It is con. Okay, um, it's a 27. All right. uh, for the goblin, that is a natural one. That's going to be fourth of the night. For Neat. the hobgoblin, not much better with a 10. Um... So I believe all of or except for the, the ward, they all fell. All right. Um, okay. I don't think so. It's 4d10. Um, 22. Okay, so it's... So, I'm sorry, did you say I was trying to math? Did who failed? How many? The uh, hobgoblin and the goblin. Not this okay. one. So they take um, 12 points of thunder damage. Oh, sorry. Whoever failed takes 20. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 22, 22 thank you. Um, and then nice. and then half as much for... The ward. Yeah. Very nice. Um, the war hadn't taken damage before, so first damage across that one. The hobgoblin is just cracks across. For those of you who can see, which is really just kind of Ori and Minka in this moment, as you guys are like uh, catching your momentum on the other side of the grass, you can see the hobgoblins looking kind of rough now. As that like explosion ripples around and the grass is torn away, the cobblestones crack. The goblin is almost like knocked off his feet. He is almost dead, but the hobgoblin as well looking pretty rough. Um, anything else, Alina? Uh, yes, I realized that I was supposed to roll 3d10 instead of 4. Um, do you want me to... No worries, no worries. Let me just take a little bit off of that. I got a 4, an 8, a 6, and a No worries, no seven. worries, no worries. I got it. Sorry about that. So, that is your turn, Alina. Mm -hmm. All right, that brings us to Patty and Yapple. Yapple at disadvantage is taking a shot at this warg, trying to shoot over the downed Ori uh, between Minka and uh, Alina. Uh, and they are going to roll a total of nine. And so, Alina, you have to, like, wheel out of the way as this arrow almost strikes you, and you get sorry. Uh, the other grung is going to attack this um, goblin. Pat. That is a natural 20 from Patty. <laughs> 
He's doing it. Patty dealing 12 points of damage to this goblin. Oh, After God. the thunder step, he, like the goblin, wheels backwards, the face kind of bruised, elements of like blood wheeling up into the eyes. This is like a concussive blast that really uh, deals damage internally. And so as the goblin stumbles forwards, Patty just right into the stomach. And you can see Patty just says, you didn't give me a choice. And just pulls the blade away. And this uh, goblin falls dead on the ground. Let's go, Patty. Um, but that MVP is Patty's turn. Patty. That brings us to Billy. Billy, what would you like to do? And Pedal is on deck. Oh, Pedal's deck. Billy's going to stand up. Billy, you stand up. Half your movement. Uh, shit. Um, Billy's looking very, very rough. Um, bleeding profusely is going to stride forward 10 feet. <laughs> Five. No, I'm just kidding. Billy's <laughs> just like, no! <laughs> just like, flip around the way over now. Uh, and... Billy, you're like running into battle, and Lena grabs you, teleports you further away, and you're still <laughs> running into battle. It's <laughs> like, no! <laughs> uh, and uh, can't get much closer without being dumb about life. Uh, and is going to um, Eldritch Blast Wolf Warg. Go for it. Make your attack rolls. Warrant. Warrant. <laughs> Uh, so that is a 14, which is probably not going to hit. That does not. Uh, and a 21. 21 does hit. All right. Ooh. God damn it. Five. Five? <laughs> okay, you know what? That's still damage. It's, it's something. It is. Uh, and this world is starting to look pretty hurt. Anything else, Billy? Last bardic spell slot to, to give myself healing words. There you Fuckery. go. <laughs> you heal yourself as you rush forwards, throw the Eldritch Blast out, but that is your turn, Billy. That brings us to the initial group of goblins. Uh, Ori, the two who are up on that hill taking shots on you. Yep. Ori, that is going to be a 15 Miss. and a 13. Miss! The other two, one who is glowing and one who is not. The one who's glowing is not glowing anymore. Ah, okay. The two who are not glowing are going to be taking shots against you, Alina. Is this one still cursed? Alina, that is a 23 oh, yes. and a 11. That's 23 hits. With a 23, that is going to be uh, four points of piercing damage. A tiny arrow digs into your uh, lower calf. Uh, but that is the initial round of goblins. They will all try to hide again. It's my pronking leg. Two, <laughs> two of them have managed to hide. <laughs> The Ooh. same two, or the two on the hills, <laughs> duck down. And uh, Ori, even you cannot see them. Oh, wow. The other two do not succeed. They, they're not good at hiding. They, they both have not successfully hidden yet. I don't think. Mm -hmm. That is the initial group of goblins that brings us to Cheshire. Ori, you are on deck. Son of a witch! <laughs> <laughs> and casting Bane. Nice. Against Hobgabo and the two wargs. Ooh. They need to make charisma saving throws. So potentially charisma saving throws. Yes, sir. Do it! Okay. Uh, the highest is an 18. The 18 will succeed. Okay, the next highest is much lower than that. Okay. The two 12, that fail. Okay. Whenever they make an attack roll or a saving throw before the spell ends, which is up to a minute, they must roll a d4 and subtract the number rolled from the okay. attack roll or saving throw. So that is the warg and the goblin. Mm -hmm. This one and this one? Or this one? No, no, no. Oh, the goblin? I thought it was the goblin. Oh, this goblin. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was that no, goblin. No, it's the hob goblin and two wargs. Hob goblin and the yeah. warg. And the two wargs. But the two words are very separate, and so that would also encompass a grung, yeah, it's just an ori. Up to three creatures of my first. Oh, 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 sorry. I am it's not, it's not a, You thought it was spell. a cloud of bane. Yeah, that's what usually happens. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Okay. So, yeah, it could be whichever word. It doesn't really matter. Don't yeah, probably a good idea. So, you cast <laughs> bane. <laughs> And as this creeps across the air, it's almost like instead of shadows, like you kind of associate with hex, it is as if this spell seeps into the skin and the hides of these creatures and begins to bubble up underneath, creating elements of some kind of like necrotic scar tissue that instantly sears across. But that is your turn, Cheshire. Don't fuck this up. 
inspiration for Billy. <laughs> Very similar brands of inspiration, just different tones. Yeah. That is your turn, Cheshire. Ori, what would you like to do, Mika? You're on. I'm gonna steady aim and stab this sword, hopefully for good. Two there points go. of healing. Standing your ground. Oh, nice. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna do that. That's a 21. That hits. Ba, 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 sneak attack. You stab it, slash him almost at the neck, and you slam away elements. You cut through the, uh... Did it take its poison damage? It is it poisoned. It's it's oh, it's poisoned. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. It, it, but that's part of why it's been rolling yeah. all these ones. Gotcha. So, uh... Or, Thanks, mm, Petal. Yeah. <laughs> Petal's just like, I got you from above. <laughs> from heaven. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no problem. So, um... Da -da -da -da, give me one second here. Ori, that was... 17 on the war. As you pull away and it cuts through the cartilage and the flesh, there is blood seeping out, and as it growls at you, it runs down the lips, but it is still up. As it, like, inhales, you hear the air flap through the skin. This thing is barely alive, but still up. Damn. That's it for me. All righty. That is your turn. Where that brings us to you, Minka, and then the next group of goblins. Uh, I'm going to cast Healing Word upon Billy. There you go. <laughs> and just be like, Billy, you got this? <laughs> Inspiration from one side, a healing word from the other. So that is... How can I not fail? A total Wait. of <laughs> uh, four and... Five. <laughs> so five points of healing for you, Billy. That's better than what I was before. There you go. Um, I'm in double digits now. And then <laughs> Minka is going to take the flame that she has been holding for many turns now. <laughs> Um, I about that. And oh, right. I've been holding and hucking at the warg. <laughs> so finally, unleashing this fire as it like starts to singe your fingertips. You're like, oh right, and you throw it. <clears throat> no, what did what happened? Throw a natural one. No. Uh, or no. make a dexterity saving. Oh. Or actually, no, so Billy. No. You, you are right in the way. Yeah, no. Billy, make a dexterity saving. God damn it. Sorry, you were right. You were covered by the tree for just long enough for me to think it was Ori, and then I moved to the side. What was that? Oh no! Seven. Ooh, go ahead and roll damage on that. As you uh, throw this flame at Billy, you heal Billy Make with one hand, and you take it. <laughs> <laughs> If this is also five, this is just perfectly balanced. No, did you did you get max damage on me? Why How much did you damage do that? is that, Minka? Let me just double check this. <laughs> Why did you do that? Oh, it's 2d8, sorry. No, oh my god. god. Oh man. What is. I should really step oh back. Oh my god. Level. What is the matter? I never, I never, I never account for the fact that you have a level four or five PC also fighting against oh you. Yeah. <laughs> How much damage do you kill Billy with? Point to the baby. So, Billy, you wheel around. There's a combat happening everywhere. There are things flying over you, flying by you. There's tiny arrows going in both directions. And as you wheel around, you see, like, the glow from Minka. And as the healing hits you, you turn around, like, to show appreciation. And then you just see fire, fire, fire. And it strikes you. Are you unconscious? Yes. Like, oh my fucking that is the last thing you see as Minka murders you. So you drop yeah. down. <laughs> that is it. Your turn, Minka. Anything else? Anybody else you want to hurt? One time was fine. I could, you know. But two, excuse a little me. suspicious. Three, that's when any sane person would stop. But now, Minka, on the fourth time, I think we need to start drawing some conclusions. So, Minka, that is your turn. I don't know if I can get behind. Unless there's anything else you would like to do. I can't. 
Okay, fair enough. That brings us to the second group of goblins. So, there are babies. This is, uh, my help! <laughs> goblins, help me! I'm gonna turn and just fully start running off. No, not the horse! Uh, the hobgoblin is gonna turn around and close the inventory. This word. Oh, I am now the set. <laughs> Avenge me! <laughs> so, this first word against you, Ori, continuing to just dig into you at disadvantage. Uh, the first one is a nine, and the second one is a natural one. Extra mice. Uh, so naturally, it attacks oh. Billy as well. <laughs> so Billy leaps 15 feet over as part of its natural one and bites you twice. No. Uh, oh, Billy's dead. <laughs> the goblin is going to take two attacks against you, Ori. Uh, that is going to be a 24 and a 25. Yep, yeah, those are going to hit. Ori, you are taking... 10 points of piercing damage total. Okay. Both attacks not terribly deep. However, this hobgoblin. That's, yeah, that's what I was waiting. It's going to shield bash you. Uh, however, that is going to be a 12 to hit. Needs to subtract a d4 also. Ooh. Oh, because of the bane. Spicy. Oh, the war was supposed to. Oh, no, it was the other one. I, the war is at disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, so that's only a six. That also misses. And so uh, that, uh, the second attack, no, that is both. That is all of their attacks. Not a whole lot going on over there. That bane so is kind of a whole lot. Yeah, yet. I know. You guys haven't killed any of the original ones. Uh, the oh, final work the over there on you, Minka. Yeah, we mm -hmm. yeah, we um, and it needs to take uh, D4s know. away as well. So, Minka, that is going to be a 7 and a negative 2. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> With the modifier, a flat 0. Oh. So, uh, this being like, tugging at them, this weird element that is traveling through the skin yanks them down. As it, like, leaps towards you, Minka, it's like there's an invisible force that just grabs it and yanks it to the ground. It yelps out a little bit. Um, but that is all of their attacks. That brings us to Alina and then the Grump. Um, Alina is going to stare daggers at Minka. And then, because she feels like she can't trust her to fix this mistake, she's going to go and use a... Um, oh, does she trust know that? Hannah knows that you have a healing potion, but I don't know if Alina does. Um, she's gonna kneel down and use um, a use of her healer's kit to stabilize okay. Billy. You stabilize Billy, not willing to lose Billy again. You get down, uh, you bring out elements, and you begin to work. Anything else, Alina? Just more staring daggers at Minka. <laughs> That brings us to the grung. Yupple is going to take <laughs> oh, hands. So he like <laughs> runs over to the other side of the, of the hut and from that window is going to try to shoot at the warg that is nearest Minka. Um, that is a disadvantage because it's through a window happen. and through a bunch of people. Both are eight and so that's going to be a 14 and a miss. Uh, but Patty is going to rush up behind the hobgoblin. Nice. Get that advantage. Get him. Slash his Achilles like or something. <laughs> the advantage is going to bring him to a 20, which is a hit. Let's go. The other one was a natural one, I think. Jump on his yeah, back and poison him. Uh, and <laughs> Patty deals six points of damage. Nice. Patty is and induces a saving throw. He can come along with us okay. on the journey. Hobgoblin <laughs> able to just shrug away this poison. <laughs> that is Patty. That is Yuppel. <laughs> that brings us to you, Billy. Billy, what would you like to do? And then we're back to the top of the order with the goblins. If Billy's stable, that means Billy's just unconscious. And Correct. Just oh, yeah, right. But You're unconscious. <laughs> what would you like to do? <laughs> You're still alive. I would, I would really like to think about life and um, the fact that Ori killed me twice, and now Minka's killed me. Yeah. Twice. <laughs> no, because no, Billy still is under the impression that Minka yeah. killed me. <laughs> so that is your turn, Billy. That brings us to the, the top of the round off. and the goblins. <laughs> the two goblins who are not Church hiding are going to take flat attacks against Alina. Alina, 
That is going to be a uh, 11 and a 13 to hit. Nope. And so those two both miss. The two that are both rolling at advantage because they are hidden are going to be taking attacks against Ori. Ori, you're right there, buddy. Sorry. That's okay. Um, that is going to be a 17 to hit. That hits. And a 24 to hit. That also hits. You are taking 7 plus 7 Real points. 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 points of piercing damage. 14 points. Okay. <laughs> so in total, that is going to be 10 points of piercing damage. Hit. That is all the original goblins. Still pretty easy. At the very end of their turn, those two goblins on the hill, bonus action hide, and both of them are not going to do well. <laughs> Five and seven. So, nice. that is the original That's goblins. Nice. Cheshire, what would you like to do? Ori, you were on deck. Minor illusion. Watch out, guys! <laughs> I'm just going to bounce around a little bit. As you say it, and it bounces magically, there's one or two real. Watch out, guys! <laughs> and up the cry. And... Not like this. Healing word. Really. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Question. S- does bardic inspiration last if you get knocked unconscious? I believe so, yeah. I think it, I, I, think I, it does. I, I don't think there's anything that really ends it aside from just time. It's eight points of health. Yay. Very nice. And so this healing seeps into you. You come alive. You see Alina knelt healing over you. Anything else, Cheshire? Nope. All right. Wachak is all around. Ori, what would you like to do? <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm gonna try to finish off this freaking ward thing. Yeah, go for it. Steady aim stab. Make again. your attack roll. That's gonna be a, like a 28 or something. 28 will definitely hit. Make your uh, damage. Alright, that's. Uh, uh, it's, it's a good amount of damage. Um, 26. Ori, this creature already, like, dragging the poison, dragging it down on one side, the hex kind of creeping in and making it slow. And so, without any trouble, the sneak attack, more like you're able to just loom over it and you have every advantage over this creature. <clears throat> you dig the sword straight into the side of its head, pull it out, and it's done. I'll take that. <clears throat> oh. ah. Just throw them around. And uh, that's it for me. All right. I turn, not actually moving, to face the other enemies that are still upon me. No problem. That is your turn, Ori. That brings us to Minka and then the second group of goblins. Minka, your victim is back. (laughs) Who would you like to murder now? (laughs) I'm looking pretty fresh. I'm back. You get a show and throw another one in my face? (laughs) Um, Minka is just going to, um, move forward next to Alina and cast Cure Wounds on the belly. <laughs> and just be like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Cure Wounds on Billy, um, which is going to be... Why? Why? <sighs> Uh, nine points of healing. So, like, um, two healing points per sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then the bonus healing uh, for another seven points. Very nice. And then she's going to move the healing dryad over to Billy. <laughs> 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 just completely abandoned. And then, <laughs> and then, no, it's not. Okay. And then heal her for six more. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so you just hear, sorry, sorry, sorry. you sorry, just another burst of healing as all of these elements draw into this. And that is my action my bonus action and I'm done <laughs> Minka, a swarm of healing from different sources but that does bring us to the other goblin reaction to ruminate on, on it's gonna get better it's gonna get worse before it gets better <laughs> it's a reaction so this goblin uh, now wheels over and as it sees you kill its mount worry it is gonna take two attacks against you Oop, still off the mic uh, that is going to be a 14 and an 11. Yes, those both going to be misses. So swings, swings. You can see like little tears in the big goblin eyes. You killed his friend. But uh, the other warg is going to take attacks. Or actually, no. Hobgoblin first. The hobgoblin, just being stabbed from behind, probably the first attack. Uh, no. Shield bash against Yori. Minus a d4. Minus a d4. Which is good. So that is a 25. That is a 21. 
So it's, yeah. <laughs> Uncanny dodge. <laughs> Question mark? Oh, great, great. Um, whew. That is 15 points of bludgeoning damage, and go ahead and make a strength saving throw. Uh, I don't need <laughs> you are <laughs> knocked prone and unconscious. Uh, absolutely floored, and then with a second attack, a hobgoblin wheels around and swings. Oh, yes. We're doing, so We're doing awesome. So that is going to hit. That is minus a d4. Um, I still think it's going to hit. I don't think it might have missed. Let's make me do math. No, that definitely still hits. Okay. Uh... Patty takes 11 points of damage with that slash. Oh, Patty's, Patty's, Patty's okay? Patty Patty's has one, one point of health. Patty! And so Patty. this draws across the grung. The leather snaps open. The tunic almost split in half. The skin of the grung split open, and there's blood that just oozes out. Patty falls to the ground, but he props himself up on shaky legs with his sword, still just barely alive. That is the Hobgoblin. The Warg is going to take two attacks against you, Minka. That is going to be a 9 and a 12 to hit. Nope. Nope. And so snaps, snaps, but this bane just drags it down and down, and it's unable to get you. That is this whole group's turn. That brings us to you, Alina, and then the Grung. Um, all right. I'm going to use my bonus action to move the hex to this warg, I suppose. Okay. Um, be a necklace. <laughs> um, and then I'll take a few steps back and I'll just blast. All right, make your attack. Watch out. Watch out. All right, so that's. One of them is oh. a 27. <laughs> yeah, that is. The other one is a 14. That is a 14. The 27 definitely is. This is against which one? Uh, the warg. Yeah. Uh, 13 points of damage. 13 points of damage. Okay. So that Eldritch Blast just digs into him, but still looking pretty good. Anything else, Alina? Yeah. Alrighty. That brings us to the Grung. Uh, yep, we'll add disadvantage. Well, yeah, add disadvantage to the Warg. That is going to just go up high and completely miss. Patty is going to uh, stab out at this Hobgoblin again, just barely on his feet. Um, that, that is a 19, I believe, hits. Let's go, Patty! It beats it. Patty's duking it out. Shut Patty this. deals three points of damage. Oh, hey, yeah, but five. every little bit counts. And he did, like, 11 last round, right? Yeah, and so, like, that... As that digs in and Patty like slashes, the hobgoblin slashes back. Uh, they're both looking on their very, very last legs. And so it's really like whoever gets hit next is gonna go down, hobgoblin or Patty. But that is da, 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 Patty's turn. That brings us to Billy. Billy, what do you wanna do? Flame. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and make your attack roll. I wanna hit. I can't make you do that. I want to hit. I want to hit. Yay! That is uh, 23. Uh, yeah, that is a hit. Who's it against? The warg. Okay. I'm gonna hold on to that bardic for later. I'm gonna hit with the six. Anyone's gonna hit the hop. <laughs> we'll just Ooh, let him Extra d8. <laughs> Uh, so that's 10 fire damage <laughs> and 9 piercing damage. Very nice. And Wrathful Smite for an extra d6 psychic damage. Very so nice. one point of psychic damage and a wisdom saving throw, please. That is going to be a 16. All right. All right. So this warg starting to look pretty hurt. Between the last two strikes, it's really starting to reel. And it's already being dragged down by Bane, uh, beginning to look a little bit uncertain. But that is your turn, Billy? That's my turn. All right. That brings us to the top of the round. The first group of goblins. The first two who are visible take attacks against you, Alina. That is going to be a 15 to hit. Nope. And a 13 to hit. So nope. both of them miss. And then off in the distance, so you can't see them, you hear voices. Uh, Ori, you're down, right? 
Oh, nobody hears voices. <laughs> I hear voices. That is those goblins. <laughs> that brings us to check. <laughs> Maybe coming to the mushroom. Hey, hey, hey! Um, Dissonous whispers at the I'm hobgoblin. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> that is a wisdom saving throw. Minus it's a d4. Oh my, yeah. okay. That would be a 17. Uh, 16. <laughs> that is just going to save. Ah. <laughs> um. So, a great thought. Anything else, Cheshire? Hold on. Still takes half damage on a success. 3d6 psychic damage. Okay. That's 13, half to 7, 6. As you cast this dissonant whispers and it crackles across the space, you just say, hey, 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 hey. And all of a sudden, <laughs> you can see Patty, like, barely alive, is, like, squaring off against the hobgoblin, like, four times its size. The hobgoblin's about to draw back. And then the eye, like, twitches, a little bit of blood just <laughs> from the nose. They only had three health left. Oh. And so the hobgoblin oh. drops. Patty's safe. Well, There's still a goblin right still a goblin. Head, but <laughs> the hobgoblin, dead. Patty's less in danger. as well. Well, hey, <laughs> inspiration. <Thanks. laughs> Very nice. It changes the tone just a little. Hey, hey, hey. That is your turn, Cheshire. Yes. Ori, what do you want to do? Minka, you're on back. Make it that saving throw. Go for it. Some <laughs> favorite activity. Got an eight. Hey, one of are great. <laughs> so that is your turn, Ori. Minka, what would you like to do? Tear is streaming down her face. She's gonna rush forward to Ori <laughs> and probably take an attack. You opportunity. will take an attack of opportunity from the world. It is, is uh, it is Bane. There's gonna be a 24 to hit. Go ahead. Down to a 22. Yeah, it's a hit. And so, Minka, you are taking 11 points of piercing damage. Okay. Hey, try it still up. Very nice. Yay! That giant's powerful. Mm. It has one left. <laughs> um, so healing word, second one, not healing word. Cure wounds, second level on Ori. Okay. And so and then I'm going to use my bonus action to move the dryad so its last pulse goes on to Patty. Very so nice. we'll do that first. Okay. Does it go on multiple people? Huh? Can it go on multiple people? No. Well, it, you, it can as long as it can move, but it can only heal once a turn. Yeah. yeah. So, only one point of healing. <laughs> if it doubles oh, itself. No, it's one point of healing. Um, so. And then, on Ori. Um, <laughs> okay. It went. It like oh, bounced it up from the, the tower and into her little, nice. her smaller tray. Yeah. Um. So that is seventeen points of healing. Nice. And then the bonus is gonna go towards Patty. <laughs> Three more points. Hey, he's looking great now. We're We're what back. Like before. We're back. <laughs> And then <laughs> the boys are back in town. <laughs> and the whole time, and she's like, ah! <laughs> that's her turn. That's her turn. That brings us along to the second As group. Usual. Of the so the goblin who is nearest you, uh, Ori, is going to bonus action disengage, and he is going to run fifty feet towards the hill. This way. Yep. And as he gets, yeah, right, right about to there, as he gets there and is like moving through the grass, you can tell the other two goblins not there anymore. You can pull them off the board for now. That is that turn. The warg, who is kind of backed into a corner, is going to snap at you, Billy. First one, <laughs> that's going to be an 11 and a 12. Nope. So snaps again, snaps again, but the Bane drags it down. That is all of their turns. Actually, at this point, I think the Warg is going to probably take the attacks of opportunity uh, and back away from you, Billy, to try to run around. Yeah, it's going to run around and get to right where 
A little bit further, a little bit further. A little bit further, a little bit further. A little bit. Yeah, right there. <laughs> Perfect, right there. Uh, and so this war like, uh, just dashes away. Billy, you want to take an attack of opportunity? Yeah. No. <laughs> so you swing out, but it leaps over the blade, lands on the ground, and continues running. It's like there's a retreat in this group happening with that hobgoblin down. Um, but that is their turn. That brings us to you, Alina, and then the Grung. I'm going to keep Eldritch blasting him. Yeah, he's go a, for it. He's a bad dog. <laughs> <laughs> bad dog. Um, all right. So two beams, um, a 13 and a 24. 13 misses, 24 hits. Fourteen points of damage. As you hit this creature and it's like bounding away, it's limping. This hit like almost splinters the one of its legs in the back, and it's dragging itself along, barely alive, just barely hanging on, but still up. Anything else, Alina? No. Okay. It limps and whimpers and just drags itself across the cobblestones, but that is your turn, Alina. That brings us to Patty and Yuppel. Patty wheels around, dashes 15 feet over, and he is going to, at advantage, stab this creature. Get it, Patty! He misses. No! The easiest shot. The absolute easiest shot that he has. He misses. He runs, and in the gore, Ori's blood all over the ground. Ori has bled more blood than he should have in his body at this point. And so, like, Patty is slipping in it, trying to get over there. But no problem. That is Patty's turn. That brings us to Yuppel, who's going to take a disadvantage, a long range attack. I guess he can't go triple disadvantage. Triple yeah. disadvantage. <laughs> The closest that he's gotten to hitting, but still misses, this arrow going <laughs> right by him. And that is the groan that brings us to you, Billy. What would you like to do? Uh, Billy kind of scans the field, sees that Patty's got this, <laughs> and uh, her eyes settle on the original target of her ire. Uh, and she's going to focus her Eldritch Blast at um, the Hexblade Curse. I know that's no. not that I mean, Minka is in the way. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it would yeah. be fair if you rolled a one right now and just blast <laughs> Minka in the face. Billy will take, like, a step to the side. Just so she's, like, out of the way. Okay. <laughs> like... <laughs> Thinking about it real hard. Yeah. Uh, so that is a... 17 and a 21. Those are both hits. Okay. Oh, this is the Hexblade Curse one, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 10 points of force damage each. Okay. <laughs> With the very first one, you blast this dude away. I'm already a little hurt. The second one, as he's in the air, splinters him in half. <laughs> and he watches the entire stomach is like ruptured away. The spine cracks loudly and snaps, and then uh, dead and in half is this goblin. One of the like cuts on Billy's face just heals. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's literally like, mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else, Billy? Uh, nope. Okay. That oh no, is... yes. Uh, free. Uh, to bonus, bonus section, bonus section, Bardic to, to Patty. Okay. Get him, Patty. Nice. Get him. <laughs> and Patty swells up with pride. Uh, that brings us to the top of the round, and the original group of goblins, this only goblin suddenly left on the board from them, uh, kind of looks down at the, the two halves of its friend, mm -hmm. and just goes, she bear, and turns and runs, and just dashes off, and uh, they move a Carol's full 50 feet off the board. This is the opposite of Wachaka. <laughs> uh, they rush away. And uh, that is all the original goblins. That brings us to Cheshire and Ori. You are on deck. The only creature that is currently remaining at this point is that goblin in the yellow and the incredibly wounded Wark. Minor illusion, Wachaka! Do that. Anything else, Cheshire? That's it. Okay, <laughs> very effective. That is your turn, Cheshire. Ori, what would you like to do, Minka? You're on deck. Um... Looks like Patty's got it. <laughs> I like how it went from we have to defend the grung to oh the grung will fix it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna the 
what you're doing. Uh, no, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish that one off. Um, steady aim. Uh, actually, I can't steady aim because I'm gonna run up here, but I'm gonna flank it and uh, stab it. Yeah, go for it. Make your attack roll. A secret? I think it hits anyway. But yeah. Um, 23? 23 hits, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I don't know why that was, that was extra adorable. Oh, secret! <laughs> Sorry, 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 what you got? 16. <laughs> Only had three health left, and so no problem. You flank on the other side of Patty, and as Patty swells up, both of you just stab it from the either side and just slice in opposite directions, almost cutting this creature into quarters. But it falls to the ground dead. Anything else to worry? Turn it. All right. <laughs> Bonus action. Uh, I'm going to dash over into base contact with this one. Okay. You leap onto the hill following him. You can see in the distance goblins running away. A uh, pretty good distance away at this point are the other two. But that is your turn. Ori, that brings us to you, Minka. What would you like to do? Uh, seeing that everyone's like running away, uh, Minka's just gonna assess um, Patty to see like how if I can tell how hurt Patty is in this moment. Pretty hurt. <laughs> He's still pretty hurt? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna find... I can get to Patty. Yeah. So I'm gonna go up to Patty and then um, to a cure wounds while remembering that Patty's poisonous. <laughs> okay. So I will, I will take bonus action, wrap my hand, and then... <laughs> you wrap your hand up and go ahead and cast that healing spell. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's at level two because it has to be. So I use so many spells <laughs> to undo all my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> He's very healed. Mistakes were made. <laughs> so that's fourteen healing. Yep. <laughs> He's not <laughs> fully healed. And <laughs> he's inspired. He is healed. He's <sighs> Patty is at uh, the apex of his war career. At this point. <laughs> He went from being like a low-level bandit to now like he feels pretty heroic in this moment. Um, but yeah, we turned him to the side. And then I'll take the bonus for myself. There you go. And then as it, that's all okay. I. That's all I'll do. That brings us to the second word. This goblin Literally. bonus action disengage and takes us full distance, uh, running 50 feet. Uh, continues to uh, continues to run. Did you say bonus action I disengage. Did, yeah. And run 50 feet. Yep. He runs and runs and runs. You could hear her breathing heavy and just trying to get away. Um, but that is his turn. That brings us to Alina. Uh, are there any enemies left? There is one. You see in the very corner of the board running away from the oh! That one goblin. Uh, yeah. Eldritch Blast, that sucker. Nobody gets right? away. There's a tree 40, 40, 50, 60, here. 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 120 feet. Yeah. Oh, I think just... Thing. Oh, I mean, I can move, like... I'll also move true, up, also yeah. true, yeah, no problem. All right. Come back here. <laughs> Make your attack rolls. Oh, God. I don't think saying any damage. Um, she just came to that's watch That's a dirty 20 and a 23. Both of those hit. Okay. Got a couple of little um, needles. All right, so... 19 points of damage. Oh, nice. Tell us how it happens. <laughs> oh. He just, he just pops. His, his head just... No problem. <laughs> so he's running away, he's running away, or you slash at him, but he dives underneath, and you can hear he turns. The ears are down, but he laughs and snickers at you. <laughs> and then suddenly you see glowing, 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 and then <laughs> the head just explodes. You see jagged bits of the spinal column emerging from its head. Ooh. It runs like five or six more steps before like falling to the knees, still like trying to run on the top, awesome. but the legs are kicking off beat from the arms, uh. and it dies. And all of you Feel are bad. out of initiative. But very well done. That is. As the combat dies down, the goblins run away. You can hear howling in the distance, and certainly there are creatures that escaped. But in this moment, Yuppel is alive, Patty is alive, and all of you 
are still alive. We did it. And that is a victory in and of itself. <laughs> By the skin of our And because it is 10 10, this is where we're going to end for the evening. But thanks so much for joining us for this session of DD uh, Adventures in Auburn Courts of Everest. Pull us back to our three person camera here. Um, yeah, you guys did great. That was good. It was harder than I thought it was going to be. I feel like every time it's like, oh no, we can't we can't go any lower than what we've already What I will say is, Minka makes it very difficult for you, but at the same time, is your primary healing source. And so the only thing keeping you from TPK. <laughs> Minka makes it interesting. Thank you for joining us for this session. We'll be back next week on Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but if you can't wait until then, we will be back on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our original Starfinder campaign, Mosaic Team 5, but please stay safe. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 <laughs>